This podcast is sponsored by Crypto University. Yes, it's a whole university of cryptocurrency. Go to cryptouniversity.network and learn how to invest or trade in cryptocurrencies or NFTs and change your life. So use the link in the description of this video for benefits when you sign up. Welcome to Podcast with McJohnny. Today, I'm so excited. This is an extreme excitement because we have the legend in the building. We have the legend theta in the building. But before that, I have Dennis, uh, who is um, the co-host on this one. Oh, yeah. Who you'll be seeing more often, probably than myself. <laughs> <laughs> in the next few weeks and few months. And yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 but yeah. I'm so excited today because... We have theater. So I need to do proper intro for you, man. Yeah. Um, I, I did something. Uh, no worries, man. I hope I can get Glad it right. Here. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I can capture all the <laughs> achievements you have done. But I think a few of them. So welcome to the podcast with Theda. Theda is a legendary hip hop artist, creative, really cool genius. He started doing hip hop when I was in primary school. <laughs> <laughs> Award-winning, award-nominated artists, uh, and so forth and so forth. Welcome, man. Thanks, man. All uh, right, great. But I'm so excited to have you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll start on that note, man. Because nah, man, I mean, I get that a lot. Yeah. Like, it just makes me sound so too old, I guess. No, that's a good thing, man. It means you're the dawn in the area, man. Yeah, one time. Yeah, but yeah. I'm so excited to have you um, on this podcast because people that I've spoken to, everyone, man. If I'm like, okay, fine, we're doing this podcast. It's like, uh, do you have third eye? I'm like, I don't have third eye. I'm like, ah, no, 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 get that guy first. What yeah, is it, I mean, man? If I was watching the podcast, I want to see me too. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that, man. But yeah, yeah. This, this podcast, basically, we usually talk about the stories because I'm excited yeah. to know more about mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Uh, there's so many things that people talk about you, but we want to hear from you. Let, let me know about your family background. Where do you come from and stuff? Um, my late dad was um, from Zimba. Okay. A funny guy married in Senna. <laughs> um, so my mom is from Sanje. She's called Regina. My late dad is called Wells Monza. He used to be in the um, education sector. Yeah. So he's pretty well known there. Mm. Um, a writer, a teacher. My mom's a teacher also by profession. Mm, okay. I'm the first born in my family. I'm turning 38 in November. Um, right. Yeah, I've got two brothers younger than me. Mm. Third born passed away, I think, um, 2006. Yeah. If you've heard this um, Good Morning song I did, it's about him. Mm. Wow. That's basically my family, man. Mm. Mm. Great, man. No, this is yeah. just a good family. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Say, how, how does it feel to lose a dad? I lost a dad as well. Dennis. I also yeah. lost my dad. Like, uh, I, I feel like I'll, I'll, it's kind of, complicated because i, I kind of last lost my dad a couple of times because mm. i think when i was um in 98 when i was 14 he had his first stroke mm. so this this was my best friend this is my source of wisdom and this mm. is so when i was 14 he had a stroke i think he had another one when i was 15 mm. and then when i was 23 just before he died so for for about nine years, you just you just talking to someone who can't talk to you. He's already wow. gone, so so it's it's hard to pinpoint in my mind where I lost him, but mm. it is what it is, man. I mean, yeah. he never heard my first album. That's my only regret. But he was very supportive of what I do. He wasn't mm. surprised that mm. I'd want to educate through my music. Mm. Yeah, mm. crazy man. Uh, that's yeah. true, man. Uh, uh, specifically that because. I feel like there's there's a role that dads have in this in this society. Yeah, man. I practically raised myself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I became the man of the house of fourteen. Yeah, and and, and men, 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 men yeah. when you're when you're the firstborn mm. and yeah. you lose the da- you, you lose your dad, mm. you actually like carry that responsibility. Yeah, you, gotta you have step to like up. be you there for your up. mom. You gotta step up. Mm. There was many things happening at the time, you know, with um 
relatives in the rural areas, how they see things. Mm. When, when my dad is not well, they try and take this over. Take. Yeah. That that old passed through me and nothing really happened to my mom, so I'm glad. That's the thing. Mm. Do you know that? Because when I, I lost dad as well. And um, mm. there's that kind of conversation that people from the family, they're always like, ah, uh, when uh, he has been bewitched or something, mm, uh, stuff uh, we've been through that. Yeah, and then you have to be defending your 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 mom like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I literally just told him to fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. Fourteen. Yeah. I'm so, dead, man. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of cut my dad's side off. We we still mending bridges. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think no wonder that your your music is is deep because you're you think that has that. a factor. Mm. You think that has um, you think that contributes? I think so, man. Because you've gone through a lot, then. Yeah, but I don't put it in my music, so. Yes, but I think the the growth is is undeniably there okay. uh, within your within your veins because you have experienced so many things. So your thinking is different from someone. Yeah, 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 man. I've been I've been I've been hustling since I was eight years old. Mm. First time I asked my dad for money was I used to go along with private school. Mm. So a lot of rich kids there. I was only there because uh, I was learning for free because my mom was a teacher there. Ah, yeah. So the first born is 100% off. Second born pays 25. Third born pays 50. Mm. Fourth pays 75% of the fees, stuff like that. So I got a free education in good school. Mm. But I felt out of place all the time mm. because I didn't have the things that other kids had. Mm. So when I asked my dad, for like pocket money, he's like, what did you do? I'm like, what do you mean what did I do? He's what? like, there's no such thing as free money, man. You got to work and get paid. So, hey, from then, he just he just, he just created a monster, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was... A crazy parent, man. Yeah. yeah, man. I mean, I never saw my dad half the time. Mm. And my mom and me were, were not close. I don't know why. Mm. We used to be close and then we grew apart. I guess there was something going on with my dad. Yeah. I've never asked about, but she suddenly became very harsh towards me. Mm. So I'd gravitate to waiting for my dad every three months to see him because he always be on the field, mm. out of the country, stuff like that. Yeah. So in between, I just be hustling, man. Um, I'd be, I mean, my mom is selling chickens and she's, she's employing like women from around the hood. Then if they're getting, I don't know, 20 dollars for, for, for plucking feathers off one, mm. I'm, I'm doing four chickens. I'm getting my 80 dumbbell, you know, mm. stuff like that. Uh, if if she's trying to sandpaper the the guest wing, I'm asking her how much she's paying. She's paying those guys 40K. I mean, 40 guys at that time. Mm. I'm charging her 20, bro. Me and my brother doing it. Wow. By the time I was 10, I told her, yo, man, escort me to, um, what do you call these guys who used to do swan freezes? Uh, <laughs> what was the company? Yeah, I think the way, but they were selling him back, right? So you would you would get it. Yeah, man. I told my sale. mom to scorp me. I want to go buy a bale of freezers. I mm. bought my first bale of freezers when I was ten years old from those hustles, man. Wow. And by the time I was ten, I had like um, I think they were like those like twelve freezers in one pack, mm. and then those twenty in a bale. Mm. Yeah, so I think I was making double the profit. Wow. I was selling to area ten, area twelve, area eleven. I walk around. I have no shame. Wow. I saw my first bill, second bill, everybody's coming to my house. So I just even pay the guy mm. who works for my mom to sell my stuff and I'm on to the next hustle. So I've been hustling forever, bro. I'm mm. I'm 38 now. It's like 30 years of hustle. Mm. Yeah. Crazy, man. Mm. No, uh, I'm excited to, to, to talk about the hustle. <laughs> yeah. because most of us have also grown up uh, on hustle. Doing the same. Like, yeah, as, yeah. as he's explaining, I'm like, Walking through my own shoes, yeah. like selling water when we used to stay in the exactly. yeah. mm -hmm. we used to like make water go exactly. on. And yeah, I think that's like a, a story that uh, a lot of us have. Mm -hmm. Which areas did you grow up in? Area 12. Area 12. Uh, my mom, I think um, we came back. Uh, my dad was in the UK for a while. Mm. Um, I can't remember going there, but I can remember coming back when I was three. I think I was a few months old when I went. Okay. So that's why also my first language is English, actually. A lot of people don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So we came back when I was three. That's 1987. Mm. I think we were homeless for a while. I remember staying in Blanta with my uncle, my late uncle. And then we, we got given a house in Area, area 12. That's what we've been since, you know. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, my mom is still there. Okay. Mm. Cool. Let's talk about the school. Um, so you were mm-hmm. doing school um, mm-hmm. where your mom was teaching. Was it Lilongwe? Longo Private uh, School. Longo Private. Mm. All right. So after after sec- after sec- that was secondary, right? Primary school. Um, Primary, I yeah. think when I was eleven, that's when. Um, I think my mom felt I'd do better in a boarding school. Mm. I wanted to be in a boarding school. And then, so when I was, I think, 11 or 12, I went to Likuni Boys in 1997. Mm. And then that was from Form 2. Yeah. So instead of going to Form 2 in LPS, I went to Form 2 in Likuni Boys. So I did 98, 97, 98 there. Then I repeated Form 3. Mm. Um, f- my mom felt I was too young to finish Form 4 for some reason. Mm. So I repeated at Prezi Boys. Yeah. Form three and then did form four there. And finished in two thousand. Oh, all right. Yeah. Mandela, the name. Um mm-hmm. because your dad was was into writing and oh, we stuff. never had that conversation. Never had that conversation, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. I also ask myself, because mm-hmm. I don't know why why my dad gave me my name. Mm-hmm. Never had I, that I just know how my dad thinks, man. Of course he named me after someone who was in prison at the time, but he knew his story wasn't over, so Ah, yeah, that time, that time the story was not over, right? Yeah, yeah I was born in 84, about 10, 10 years before Nelson was released. Crazy. Mm. Crazy. And he was born to give you that name, man. Yo, my life is crazy from the start, fam. I can't lie to you. <laughs> Dude, that, that, yeah, because I was, I was thought that uh, the name came after, like, okay, Mandela's already like a hero, so... Mm. Your dad was like, oh, we've got like a story. So I would want my son no. to emulate. But in, then in it's like he was three. Still no, before, he, when when he was written off by, I was named after nobody. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah but now he's a G, so. Mm. Cool. So to, uh, 2000, you're done with secondary. Uh, what was the transition now to uh, to to go to the either university? Because oh, I, yeah, hear, I didn't, I didn't yeah. get picked to go to. Um, I was trying to go with Chanko. Yeah. Do arts, whatever. Yeah. Not arts as in, but a BA. Yeah. You know, I was trying, I was trying to become a lawyer. Mm. So, yeah, I didn't get paid. You could be a good one. I could be a good anything, to be honest. Mm. <laughs> I learned quick. Yeah. But um, I had a passion for, for, for law because I think it's the basis of everything. Mm. If you understand the law, you can understand anything on top of it. Yep. So basically. But when I didn't get picked, um, my mom tried to get me to go to SA. Mm. But I felt like it wasn't a good place for me to go because I'm a I'm a wild child mm. at the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so even myself, I, I knew I knew SA wasn't good for me. Yeah. So we settled for Kenya because the, the currency was a bit lower than Malawi's yeah. in terms of strength. So I was a, I went to Catholic University of East Africa um in 2000, 2002. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing to pick. The currency mm. of Kenya was lower than Malawi at the particular time. Yeah, so I told her that's better. Yeah. And now the rand was stronger. Yeah. yeah now now this that time compare. was like ninety nine to about I think to a shilling. Uh, now it's about a hundred quarter to a shilling. Crazy. Yeah. So you went you went to Kenya. So there you were also doing arts. What was happening? I was I was studying philosophy. Philosophy. Mm. Mm. I was doing a BA in philosophy, minoring in social sciences. <laughs> <laughs> what's <Hello>. quite interesting? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, never thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> People okay. that go to the university when they do uh, social sciences, so just because of a major. So philosophy becomes yeah, like that was a, my minor, bro. Uh, Come on. Crazy as it. I was like a challenge. If I was forced to go to school, I told my mom, you know, I'm going to bring this degree, go hang it up there. It's mm. yours. I'm going to go my way and do my music. Yeah. And then midway through, I felt like I can't do this just for someone else's sake. Mm. So that, had, that time was when you were in which year? Um, 2005, January. I was um second year. Second year. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, wow. uh, yeah. I was I was going into my second semester, second year. Mm. So I, I took academic leave. I took my tuition, went straight to the studio, paid. Yeah, I had to break my mom's heart to be here. Yeah, yeah, it's 
Crazy man. Mm -hmm. Crazy man. Because I think, yeah, that's that's a transition, <clears throat> right? So doing philosophy midway, you're like, nah, uh, I can do this for someone. I need to do something that I'm passionate about, which is music. Did the music passion come at a particular time or prior? Okay, um, I'll tell you something about me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. To understand me better, even when I was in school, it was kind of boring because I read these books when I was eight years old, like 80% of the books. You know, my, my dad, like I said, used to be at the Ministry of Education. Yeah. Um, like I said, English is my first language. Yeah. Um, but even so, I was taught to read by the time I was two. Because the what? lady, the lady who used to babysit me. Why do you think my mom was broken hearted? I was supposed to be some academic whiz kid, bro. Uh, I can't lie to you. Um, the lady who used to babysit me in the UK had mm. me reading by the time I was two. Whoa. So by the time I was four, I was reading grown-up books. And then my mom was trying to get me into standard one early. Mm. But they said I was just too young, even though I could read, I could write. Mm. So I had to wait for two years to get into standard one. Mm. When I got into standard one, I'd already read everything probably past standard mm. six. Okay. Wow. So mm. school has always been, I'm self-taught. So mm. school has always been something I'm just doing for someone else's sake. Yeah. So by the time I was eight, I remember my standard three teacher my mom was teaching stand four, so it was the first class where we took books home. Yeah. Otherwise, you just do reading in class, whatever. So she had me read books from stand three, and then when stand four got a book, and then stand six. Mm. And then she went to my mom. She took me to my mom. She's like, there's something wrong with your son. Like, he's reading stand six books. So I went to form two. She told me to pick a book from whatever. I picked a geography book. Mm. She told me stand in front of the class. She stopped the class and I started reading it. So then I used to go from that day, stand three, I used to go to the secondary section library to borrow books for my friends. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, so, that's so, crazy. Uh, uh, yeah. Who are you, man? So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm boring books like Iliad of Homer, bro. I read mm. them in two days. Mm -mm. I remember when I was eight, I read the Bible in two days, cover to cover. What? I finished the dictionary in two days, cover to cover. It's like, it's nothing strange in my family when they hear me say this. They just don't hear me say it to anybody. But today we're talking, so. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I feel like. <laughs> hey, that's okay. crazy. So by yeah. the time I'm in college, it's like, I didn't really see the use, man. Mm. I've known Iliad of Homer since I was eight. Now I'm 16, 17. It's like. Yeah. There was really nothing for me to do. I'd be in the back just writing rhymes, bro. Mm. So from reading, I stopped when I was 11. And I remember my mom called her best friend. She's like, Mandela, I'm mm. She's like, why? He stopped reading. My mom knows me well. She knew I've, I've soaked up so much info. Now mm. I'm about to start using it. Mm. Yeah. So that's when... um. My passion for, I've always had a passion for music. I'd be, I'd, I'd be getting paid to dance at birthday parties, bro. Mm. Six, seven years old, I used to pull a Michael Jackson or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay. We used to perform for my mom and dad on the, on the wedding anniversaries, eight, oh. nine, ten years old. Oh. You know, so by the time I actually committed my whole life to music was when I was 14, mm. to answer your question, because. Mm. I don't know if you know something called the Novena. The Catholics do it. The Catholic yes. thing, yeah. books that you like have these prayers mm -hmm. and yeah. So there's three prayers, right? Mm. I think you pray for what, three days? Yeah, you actually have several days that you yeah, pray. Yeah, like yeah. don't like mm -hmm. skip a day. Yeah. You have to, when you study. There's a sequence. Yeah. And I remember uh, the first prayer I prayed was to give my, because my brother had sickle cell, Steve, late Steve. Mm. I was talking about the third yeah. born. He had sickle cell. So I know there's no cure in that, but it's like at least give him a long life, mm. you know, and the least painful life because it's kind of selfish to want someone to suffer for long yeah. just so you can see them. So I think um, that was my first prayer. My second one was also to give my dad a long life. Mm. 
So, and um, the third one was, if you do these two things, I'll dedicate myself to my talent and you can use me for it. And I'll mm. do the music for the rest of my life mm. and change as many souls and minds as I can. Mm. So by the time I was 23, I had already dropped out. Like this was um, 2007. Yeah. About two years after I dropped out. Mm. When, when, my, when my brother died. Yeah. Because now I dropped out two years ago. I mm. put out two mixtapes. Mm. Right? I was just rapping because that's my passion. Yeah. But when my brother died, I remembered my promise. God, like when I was 14, like, mm. damn, kept him alive nine years. Mm. Oh, God. So that's when I did my first album, Imagine Being Jesus and Not Knowing It. Mm. Mm. All right, man. Your okay. crazy stories for days, man. Hey, yeah. hey, 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 it's hey, gonna be like, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Oh, but I hear you. All right. The thing is, so when you dropped out, uh, how long did it take you to come back to Milan from 2006? <laughs> <laughs> I dropped out in 2005. Okay. Um, my mom told me, okay, um, this is what you've chosen and I can't support you. And I told her exactly, I don't want to be supported. So I was out there. Ish, I think I was living on the street for like the first eight months. Living on the streets, man. Yeah, because cause I got... I not only took my tuition to the studio, I took my rent too because Whoa. it wasn't enough. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Also crazy so, what this there, man. Yeah, man. I, I, when, I, when I want something, I want it. Yeah. So I took my tuition and my rent, so I was just waiting to get kicked out. I think I got kicked out after about three weeks because mm. this guy wasn't having it. Mm. So I was... I was this is a place where I don't have day one friends, like childhood friends, yeah. you know? So mostly the people that would, would, would let me sleep on a crowd, uh, couch from time to time, like crash on the couch, mm. is, is my first, first fans mm. from my, my two mixtapes. Ash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So your two, two mixtapes were actually now being used as your copy to like yeah, do yeah, other yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a mixtape. Um... I took a risk and put it in uh, what they call matatus. They're these minibuses, they mm. graffiti, they got big sound systems, mm. but they're from the ghetto, bro. And that time, English is a taboo in, mm. in Kenya. Like, when I'm rapping Kenya in English at the time, I'm risking my life for real because someone's going to throw a bottle, someone's going to wait for me outside. Oh. Like, what do, what do I think I am? It was no, crazy. Yeah, nobody could imagine I was a foreigner. They thought I was a Kenyan speaking English trying to feel better than them. Oh, wow. yeah. And Kenyans hate that shit. <laughs> Serious? <laughs> it's not like here where people where, see when you speak with that nah, accent. That's like, yeah, oh, yeah, this guy. Okay. It's the first thing you're trying to hide. Oh. And now I'm living on the street for eight months, so How are you luckily, surviving? I could speak slang. I could speak slang. Hey. I was living with street kids under bridges by Ken Calm there. If you know Ken Calm under the bench, that's me opposite Hilton. I'd be, I'd be sleeping on the bench, just checking out Hilton like, hmm, one day. The same music. Mm. Dude, that's it. Yeah. I did eight months and then I got lucky because someone was starting a studio. Mm. And then I, I could produce, but mm. I wasn't like the best producer. Mm. So when my friend linked me up with this guy, I'm like, you know what? I know someone better than me. He's a guy who produced um, Leftovers. It's called Hiram. Mm. So I'm like, I know someone better than me. So I went and got him. Came to the studio. They did the whole interview. He, he's like, ah, yo, you good for it? So he 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 gave him a job, man, um, as a producer. And he let me stay in the studio. Whoa. Yeah. So you were sleeping in the city? Yeah, yeah. So I just waiting on studio time, bro. Like all these big artists come through. Oh. I'm living on the floor. I'm just waiting for guys to go out and have fun. And then I'm recording myself. Mm. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I see. All right. <laughs> your story is crazy. Your story is crazy. From where yeah. we're coming from, your story is crazy. Yeah. You oh. have no idea, bro. This ain't even the half. 
Hey, man. A lot of details have been left out to protect the innocent. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> no, we need to get into the details. We need yeah, to we get can like talk about anything. anything. But we I'm, need to get all the roast dev. Hey, man. Talk to me. Huh? I'm in an interview. You, <laughs> you ask the right questions, you get the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> You're sleeping in the studio in yeah, Kenya, right? Yeah. You have no ability there, probably. Zero. Dude, I see. Staying on the streets is crazy, man. There are fights there, man. How do you survive, man? God is Being good. a foreigner. Being well, a foreigner, that's the thing. And you're hiding your accent. English is a first yeah. language. Those yeah. guys, you know, the, Kenya, the, you the, Kenyan, the Kenyan accent is something, it's right? It's very heavy. And yeah. and Swai- yeah. I think Swahili is like the real Guys, deal. you think I'm a Luo. They couldn't tell you, like, are you Luo or Luya? And that's the hardest language to, to learn there. I'll just be like, yo, you figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> How was you eating on the street? I don't know. You know, there's things like, I'm doing okay. I'm in college. I'm standing by a bus. Mm. Kids asking for a shilling or two. Yeah. I'm like, nah, man. If I get this kid money, he's gonna buy glue. Mm. But I've been I've been sniffing glue since standard three, <laughs> so I understood why. You know. Yeah. But I can, you know, I can't enable it. So I'm like, you know what, kid. This is one story, this one. If you ask me how I was eating, it's like. Yeah. So I give I, I take this kid to a, a store just like a few meters away. I buy him a loaf of bread and a packet of milk. Mm. And he's like, yo, thanks, man. He goes his way. A year and a half later, I was trying to get someone on the same line to give me cash so I could stand there and go to Karen because that's where the college is. Mm. Nah, I'm like, I'm, I haven't eaten for three days, bruh, oh. let alone showered for a week. You know, I stink. I understand. You know, I'm a street kid, bruh. I'm like 21 years old. Now I'm an older street kid. Yeah. You know I mean, that's like the lazy kind. Like, what's this guy doing? Well, asking yeah, he yeah, can do something. Yeah. yeah. And then this kid is like, yo, man, remember me? Woo. I'm like, nah, G. He's like, yo, come here. And then he took me to the other side. I took him breast by. He took me to the chips and... Spy bought me chips. He bought me a drink. He brought me a sausage. I'm like, kid, you the bread kid. He's like, yeah. And then we became friends. And then he used to show me better places to sleep and stuff like that. What? Uh, man, ah, uh, sh- Okay. Uh, wow. <laughs> I, I thought I knew you, man, but I don't. I don't. Uh, <laughs> very few Malayans know me. And those are the ones who go to Kenya. Mm. Man. To be honest. Whoa. So when you were rapping, uh, when your music was was uh, you you had you had put your music in the matatus, uh, yeah, in those matatus, <laughs> did people now start recognizing as a Kenyan artist, or they knew that something is strange with this guy? That's a very touchy subject. I can't yeah. really. I, Kenyan fans are very important to me mm. because though my first fans, yeah, they consider me family. I ain't I ain't rapped there in like sixteen years or so. Whoa. But they still consider me a legend there. Mm. You understand? Um, they've always been frustrated that I chose to come back here because Malawi is one of the poorest countries in the world, man. It is. It is Everything is, it, is behind. I think so the poorest or one of the poorest? Well, well, only country poorer than us right now is Burundi. Burundi, right? Yeah. yeah so I think it's Burundi than us, right? Yeah, we're yeah. the second poorest. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, actually, yeah. it actually took a while after putting them in my tattoos because... For about four, five, six weeks, I wasn't going close to those matatus, man. Yeah. I was scared as hell. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't using no matatus, bro. So I wasn't going anywhere else in the studio 24-7. Yeah. But Doobies, Doobies is like my big bro there. He's a legend there. He's from a group called k South. Yeah. He's like, gee, come on, man. We're going to Westland. So I'm like, whatever, man. Let's go. And then we we drop off the Madaraka ones into the ones for the ghetto now. It's like, yo, I just heard someone shout, wait, let I in Like, bring another one. Ah. And Doobie just gave me dev, like, yo, you made it. And it's like, all right. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Because I was rapping on beats for how we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New York, you know, uh, yeah. this Jaru, Fat Joe song. I was killing those joints, bro. Yeah. Through the wire. Eh, eh, eh. I had like 10 joints. I was killing all that. Whoa. So now you got someone from 
It was a 44. That's Gidurai, bro. Mm. <laughs> if you know, <laughs> yeah. a, a child from Gidurai told me, let the engine, you feel me? Yeah. My Kenyan fans out there, they know what that means. Yeah. So that's when I knew the ghetto accept me. And once the ghetto accept you, yeah, ain't nobody can yeah. stand in your way. So mm. from then on, I started trying out like my own songs. And I got one on, on um, Capital FM. Um, some some radio host called Eve D'Souza played it. She's like the Joy Nato that time. Yeah. So when, I think this was about early 2006. Yeah. Because I dropped out January 2005, got in the studio around September, October. And then, yeah, this is about March 2006. Yeah. I got my first play on the biggest radio station there. Whoa. The campus, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Mm-hmm. They had, mm-hmm. they had um, everybody like a radius of a kilometer. Yeah. Had my joint playing. Whoa. Like, you know, loud. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Dude. Yeah. Wow, this is crazy. Hey, man. Hey, man. This is crazy. So, a guy from the streets, you <laughs> yeah. got a, you got a, a slot in the studio. Mm-hmm. You're now there, sleeping there. Yeah. When the big guys are out, you are recording yourself. Yeah, all the way to the biggest radio station there. Oh, man. That yeah. was a huge achievement. Mm-hmm. That was around March. Mm. That's when I started getting all these potentials for deals. Because mm. I was making my own way still, because... It wasn't like hip hop mm. was like the main genre there. Mm. You had kapuka stuff like that, you know. Yeah. And people love to dance, man. Mm. Very few li- like to listen and learn. Yeah. And you know my brand is to provoke thoughts. Mm, 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 mm. So I'm I'm just I don't know if I'm just lucky or blessed or both. Yeah. That my thought provoking music became popular. Yeah. And even there, like even here, you know, on yeah. my second run here, but Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean so what, what was your time like uh, for you now to leave Kenya to come to Malawi? Um, Between March and I think my mom came and got me in August. She came to get you? Yeah, man. That time I didn't have a phone. Whoa. I, she didn't know that you were alive? Yo, man. Oh. She my. did because my the Malawians there told her, told Malawians here that they knew Guri Third Eye were blow up. Ah, <laughs> they, so that's the only thing that oh, she yeah. 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 can hear that me on made radio. It easier for yeah. her and everybody to like, know he's, he's yeah, still yeah. They knew doing something. Alive. Yeah, they knew I was alive because I was on radio. Yeah. yeah, I blew up real hard, bro. I can't lie. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I was like one of five hip hop artists getting getting paid for shows. At that time, it was difficult. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's not like now where you an artist can charge money a hip hop artist. That yeah, time yeah, is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um also that's what made a lot of enemies out of my Kenyan friends and peers, because I moved ahead of the pack mm. in their own territory. And Kenyans are very territorial. So they started setting me up with police. Whoa. And stuff like that. I remember there's there's um there's a crew called the Flying Squad. They they shoot other cops. They what? They they sh- they kill all the cops, you know. And those guys. Yeah. They they picked me up. I think it was around one thirty in the morning. What? From the second studio now in Westland. One thirty in the morning, man. Yeah, we're looking for Mandela Wanza. Like, yeah. Hey. They they took me to some dark areas. Had a conversation about popping me. Hey. And that time I was pretending not understand Swahili, and I kept I kept. Implying like I'm, I'm some diplomat son, but without saying it. Whoa. Mm. Like, okay, you guys do what you got to do. If my, Whether I'm dead or whatever, my dad will find me. Oh. Stuff like that. Until reach a point where they're like, you know what? This guy taking up space. Let's go drop him. And then me getting dropped off by flying squad two hours later made me look like a snitch also. So, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. yeah. So this because, was, this, like, what were yeah. you doing with the flying squad when these yeah. are the no, people how did they that bring you back alive? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Sure. So that started boiling up. It's just crazy how God works. That started boiling up. And then my mom showed up to come get me. Oh. So I left. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Nah. And then I left a lot of deals in the air. 
Mm. Some guy was trying to shoot two videos for me to put on Chan Law. Whoa. And then also put me on a retainer monthly. Well, uh, I negotiated about 18,000 shillings. That's a lot of money that time. Uh, a month, you know, plus a house, whatever. He met my mom. I took my mom. But my mom really wanted me to do my education, man. Yeah. She wasn't having it. So she saw all these things and knew if she lets me be there six more months, I'm never going back. Yeah. So she still had this hope. So when I came back, I think I stayed like, hey, my mom put my passport in the bank. <laughs> 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 You're not going anywhere. You're not leaving. Yeah, bro. I had to oh my God. go talk to my uncle, who's also my family lawyer, try to disown her hey. legally so I could get my legal papers yeah. back. Mm. Did that work? Um, no, but I went to the police station Yeah, and told them someone has confiscated my legal document. They asked me who. I'm like, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, ah. they called her. She came. Told them how I do weed or this the story just flipped real quick. Yeah. The cops are like, we know, we know he's on weed and all that. I <laughs> and then now I'm stuck there for other reasons. So I just So you're arrested. <laughs> Not really, because I was going off at the cops. Like, you know yeah. what? Fuck you guys. Mm. If something happens at home, it's your fault. Mm. I came here. Mm. You waited for a crime to happen. Yeah. After a crime just happened, you waited for a serious one to happen. It's like, yeah. you know what? Screw you guys. And then I went and then I think two days later, my mom gave me my passport mm. and five hundred dollars. Yeah, and I was out. I got there. I think it was October two thousand six. I was back by December. Everything just went haywire, bro. Mm. Yeah, nothing was working anymore. So I'm like, you know what? I know what this is. So I came back. Mm. Then it took me about a year, and I put my first album out. Mm-hmm. So the f- the first album was in two thousand and seven, right? Mm-hmm. All right, <coughs> key, key, key. All right, well, your stories are <coughs> crazy, man. So you came back, you did the first album. Um, I think imagine being Jesus, right? Yeah, yeah. not knowing yeah. it. I can't really say did it because I already had it. You already had it. So you just like put it out when yeah. you when you, you recorded it in. in what do you guys want to know everything? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I want to know everything. All right. I came back with my album it had sixteen songs. D1 told me, yo, nobody want to hear about your dead brother. Nobody want to hear about you being a prophet. Nobody want to hear all this shit. You know, using my beats for this shit. Mm. I'm like, dog, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Some friends of us were there those two days. It wasn't pretty. Mm. Yeah, it really, it really strained our relationship. But in the end, it's like, you know what? Okay, remove three songs. I'll put in three. I'll give you three other beats. And you can do songs on those and then it'll balance out my fears for. So he gave me Burning Bush, which ended up being my first single. He gave me Someday. Mm. And he gave me Wake Up. And then I removed some songs. I should move six because oh. I ended up putting 13 songs out. Um, mm. Yeah. Crazy, so even, even the producer of my first album had no faith in it. Uh uh. Yeah. Uh. I mean, I'm a huge fan of you. Yeah. Uh, that time, right? Uh, and even when I was releasing my first album, I had my second one too with Deep on it. So I never did Deep because guys were telling me my first album is the best that I can do. It was already there. Like Deep I, was already there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already had my second album with me too. Then I waited two years and put it out in 2009. What? But gone, you were saying? <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey! Okay, I was like, I'm a huge fan of you, man. Yeah. Like, I'm a huge fan. Mm-hmm. The time you were... Uh, I appreciate by the way. Yeah, yeah. The, the albums were coming, the mm-hmm. singles were coming. Um, I was in secondary then. At that time, we were trying to rap because I used to rap that particular mm-hmm. time. And you were the uh, the blueprint I feel you. of rap uh-huh. because of the reasoning, because mm-hmm. of the philosophy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for people that wouldn't understand the deep meaning of life and mm-hmm. trying to explore it Mm -hmm. it's not about the rhymes it's about the thinking Mm -hmm. people really saw a shift of uh the music that we had the the hip-hop that we had at the particular time and the rhymes that people were just forcing on those time to someone who's now trying to make people reason and they're like i don't were you weren't you scared when you're like "Ah, if i drop this in the malawian no man damn scared i don't hey not scared weren't you feeling Oh, oh, oh surprised! Oh, also, also, D told me if I drop deep, I'm shooting my career in my foot. 
Huh. But that's still another story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Be- because let me tell I, you, I, at I'm, that time, right? At yeah. that time, those those two things that you got to consider. Yeah, Chan Lo was banned in Parliament. Okay, in Malawi, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Chan Lo used to be free to air. Ah, oh, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. It was banned by Parliament. I think those Channel O and then came Big Brother also first the same thing. They're like, no, oh yeah, those two channels. Yeah, yeah. 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 they, they never like, banned. They never banned Big Brother. They banned Channel O though. Hip hop was a taboo here. Wasn't Channel O banned? Was it? Was that Joyce Banda who who gave that decree? That's 2012. No, no, no. This no. is this is this is, this is way back, before. Right? This yeah. is uh, 2012. This is Bakiri's time. Bakiri's time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They banned Channel O. Um. So. Those me doing the music I do is the reason Malayans accepted hip hop was okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> Man. Wow. After, <laughs> after 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 all the videos I put out in 2007 and yeah. eight, because there was no hip hop shows on TV, they're putting us before. Billy Gaunda, Mlaga, you know? That's when that whole hip-hop is bad for you. Thing died down and everybody started. Mm. I literally unbanned hip-hop. Yeah, because that particular time, that's why I was saying that the people People don't understand why people call me king or living legend or Mm. when it comes to hip-hop, they can't think about... You literally can't be Malawi and think of hip hop and not think of me first, bro. I'm sorry. Like, it's no offense to anybody. Mm. I know what I found. I know what I fixed and I know what I built. Everybody living in it, fam. I just don't ask for rent. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm. Straight. It's yeah. like facts. <laughs> I get it. I get it. You don't facts, ask for rent because. Nah. But everybody living asking. in the house I built. Like, yeah. facts. Yeah. That's why I can go to the corporate as the landlord mm. and get these deals these kids can't. Mm. Even if they call themselves landlords, actually, that that, that, that's one thing that we have been talking me and <laughs> Mike, straight up, straight and up. I think it's gonna come in where like it's been like a, a debate between us. Like, okay, how does that I hip hop mm. go out there, meet the corporates, and get checks and do all these shows? With Bro, big- the, the, the CEOs now forty five. They were they were thirty when I was twenty three doing my music. They were fans. They still are. Whoa! Make 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 sense. Make sense. Doing big no. like big deals with the UN, man. I'm like this guy, guy. <laughs> <laughs> so you, all right, okay. It's 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 last year, this year that we have seen like uh, hip hop artists now getting out there. Like, okay, we're gonna do a show. We're gonna do this. Gonna build up this. Mm. But I think at the beginning, instead of with all these free shows, like the current wave of hip hop going out there, being in in spaces. Mm. The and first, then we have the, the only time now. I did free shows was 2017. I think I did three. Arian, um, NRC, Mzuzu University, yeah. and what pretty get I got paid two thousand dollars for those each by Whoa. the UN. Yeah. 2005, actually. 2005. Yeah, 2.5. <laughs> 2005, I see. That. Yeah. No, this is 2017, but 2017. I got $2,500. Yeah, $2, for each That's show. like seven, five for, for those three. Like free shows. Oh. Those are the free shows I've done. They're not free for me. <laughs> but free for the audience yeah, that they came there, they yeah, didn't pay exactly. you, but you got your pay. I always get paid, bro. Okay, like my first check in Malawi was... um. Okay, Lakers Stars, 2008. Okay, fine. 2009. Okay. I like to consider my first because it was the Malawi Union of, Music Union of Malawi. Yeah. Who booked me. Mm. It's like a festival, bro. They mm. did a festival in Salima in 2009. Yeah. They had everybody, but I think it was like two weeks before they'd been promoting for months. And two weeks before the president of the union calls me, he's like, this third eye, I'm like, yeah, what's up? He's like, um, this is Gostin of him, but um, I'm with mom. We'll try and do a festival, but we've already put out posters and yeah. all that. So you won't be in a poster, but everybody is making noise about you not being there. Uh-uh. Because there's no hip hop. 
I'm like, that's not my problem. Yeah. And so what are you saying? I don't care if I'm not on the poster. You pay me a hundred k. This is like two thousand nine. hundred k is a lot. Yeah. He was still getting hundred k today. Yeah, yeah. 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 like a hundred k. So he negotiated because um, I had to put gas. Okay, I was being unfair, but not unfair. I, I negotiate hard, bro. You can't out negotiate me. Mm. I think gas to Salim and back was like eight thousand question. Mm. You know, stuff like that. In a good car, <laughs> um, I think accommodation there was like 10k or something 12k in a good place so he used these facts to get me down to 60 up front pay me 60 up front two weeks before yeah out of nowhere yeah so not to talk about anybody on the list but i can imagine i was probably the top three getting paid there whoa and this is last minute whoa yeah the year after, I think it was World Cup year, I got I got paid, was it thirty k mm. by the German embassy to go to go kick a ball at Bambino. The, they had this ball that was going around the world. Yeah, the one that was. So I was insane. the one who was, I was going <laughs> kick here. I was I signed it and kicked kick it, it in the crowd, and then I I went to the car. My girlfriend, she was driving a Benz, some chick I was dating. Yeah, I'm like ah, she's like okay, so we go. I'm like no wait. And we waited there for like 15 minutes. Someone came through with an envelope. It had like 30K and 200 guachas. I'm like, yeah, I gave it 10K. I'm like, yeah, we can go. Whoa. You feel me? I've been getting paid my whole career, bro. Dude, you've been living the life, man. You've been living the life, <laughs> no, I see. No, because, because once I touch this money, like I said, I touch 30K, she touched 10. Everybody around me eat, bro. I never yeah. eat. I never eat. Mm. I'm going to eat when I reach where I want to reach. Mm. Yeah, I ain't eating yet. Whoa. All these all these fees I'm talking about, it's my people's money. Wow. <clears throat> when they call me king, you think it's music or you think it's real life? Let me ask you. I don't even know, man. Something and like- if it's real life, what do you think my real life responsibilities are? Mm. <laughs> hey. There's some kid, I can't name him because I ain't trying to make nobody famous. He's yeah. known me, grown up, I've raised him, put him in his first radio studio session. He did a diss song about me fumbling the bag. What? Like I'm always owing people money. What do you think I owe them for, fam? <laughs> Whoa. I was going to talk about that diss song. <laughs> <laughs> so we can talk it... about anything today. This, this <laughs> can I <you> guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, happened? what happened with this guy? He was, um. there's a kid I, I saw from SA, I think. Yeah. He's based in SA, but he's Malayan. Yeah. He did a diss song about me, yeah. not not signing him back in the day. Yeah. And he, he signing him? Yeah, me refusing to sign him. Okay. That's what the diss song was about. I don't know. <laughs> okay. And under the label I had Soul Rebel at the time. Mm. So he did a diss song about me not signing him and how he's big now. Mm. And then he was using titles of my songs to diss me and then he also used the one about my dead brother. Oh. So naturally. That's crazy, man. Naturally, my first instinct is to eat. But I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of these GYs, you know? Mm. These meals that diss me. These are GYA meals, bro. Mm. None of these guys are big, you know? Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's the problem. So they just, I end up making them famous for a couple of days, yeah. which I don't like doing anymore. Yeah. I used to enjoy that shit. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Cause I remember me? when that song came it's out, even like an he art, actually like, sent it to me. Mm, it's like, mm. bro, listen to this song. And if you think you can promote this kid, help him. Yo, I, I, I listened yo. to this song and said, this song for, I'm like, yo, okay, I, I what's going to on? promote the kid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I was like, so, sure. Like, ah, dude, this guy's just, I'm like, okay. And I, 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 said, I, I sent that song to 500 like people, fam. Yeah. I sent that song to 500 people as soon as I got it. Like, <gasps> yo, help me promote this song. Uh oh. It's like, yo, so he's. I noticed that my friends are also friends with this guy. And I know they know about the song that's dissing me, also mentioning my late brother. Mm. So those are not no friends of mine no more, automatically. Mm. I, I, I'm very quick with that. Mm. So now my former friends, a few months later, Gananji is on um, Twitter. Yeah. Bigging up the same kid for dissing Slessa, Suffix, and Dead Devils. I'm like, nah, man. That's, so I tweet him. I'm like, yeah, man, you need to get off this stupid shit. Mm. 
You feel me? How you gonna dis? How you gonna? How you gonna big? Are they? Are they? Are they? What are the and dead devils gonna do about this? Hey, bro! If you know Marcus and Grydon like I do, hey, you, okay, you don't want to be associated to anything mm. in in the that sheds negative light towards them, whether it's hip hop yeah. or on the street. Mm. Uh, you don't know these Duck. people, fam. I do. I'm like, you know what? If you you can diss me, I won't do shit. But if you talk about my fam, mm, yeah. I mean suffix, bro. Yeah. What has he done? I for mean, him? come on, bro. <laughs> What has he done for him? And, and Kananji's not whack. He, he's been on a couple of my albums, fam. Mm. You feel me? He can do better than try to live off someone's hype, <laughs> dissing suffix. I mean, come on, grow up, fam. Grow up, fam. You feel me? Grow the fuck up, fam. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's like, yo, hey, you know, I exchange. He's like, yeah, but you put me on. I'm like, no, I didn't put you on. We came up together. You didn't blow because this is someone who was dope in 2007 when I put him on my first album. I don't feel like I put him on. Mm. That was my first album. How do I put you on on my first album? Mm. 14 years later, you ain't shit. It's up to you to call the platform, but ain't a platform for me, son. Mm. You just didn't blow. And you know, these guys are so bitter because they do this thought-provoking music I do and they didn't blow and they wonder why and then they just hate me for it. They don't know what I did to blow this shit. They've mm-hmm. never asked me for tips. They, they just hate. You feel me? So I'm like, you know what? He's talking about doing a song. I'm like, bring it. I get the song before I listen to it. I send it out to 500 people. I'm like, help me promote this song. Uh, you said you're one of them, right? Yeah. Help me promote this song. The next day I heard it, I was so fucking embarrassed because that song was whack, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I sent it out to 500 people thinking it's a dope it's diss a dope song, song about me. So at least they know who I'm coming at. And I'm like, all right. So I just did this joint because I noticed there's a part two coming. Mm. He said it was part one. So I'm like, all right. I'm going to take this Ali pick where he's ducking Sonny Liston. And then I'm going to take the second one where he's knocked down Sonny Liston. And I'm going to bury this kid in the third song because I'm busy right now. We're closing some... I run this commodity company also. So we're closing some deals on some sugar beans for SA. Mm. So I was very busy that week. But yeah, thankfully I found some time just to, <laughs> <laughs> just to, you know. So so that first song was really whack. His second one was way better. Mm. It was very inspiring, you know. Mm. So I did 51 and all. And then he did the second one. I dropped... um. Late lunch on Ether. And you know, Kananji's late mom is called Rose, mm. right? And his name used to be Rising Sun when I was featuring him. Mm. You feel me? Now he's changed his name to King Kananji. So when I say on the second verse, change your name to Rising Sun and you ain't Rose yet. I know you very well. Don't make me go there. He know me very well. That's why a oh. few hours later, he's oh. like, yo, oh. your beef is over. <laughs> This and that. Now, oh, son, oh. I'm still hitting the stool tomorrow oh, when I wake up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Do it, and Don't play with me, fam. <laughs> you guys have something good going until you fuck with me. Oh, I don't understand. Yeah. Oh. Now you got nothing. So. No, 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 no. <laughs> hey. Yo, so I did um Last Supper after it's a rap. It's a rap. It's a rap. It's a rap. It's a rap after that. There's no coming back from... Yo, you got to understand who I am in people's minds with hip hop. Like, you can't come with Third Eye, two songs, mm. and not have a big song, bro. That's 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 an insult to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey. Where now I'm discussing you in an interview. I don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> For real. <laughs> It's crazy, man. It's have you crazy. heard uh, about this King Kananji since his beef with Third Eye? No, no <laughs> nothing. That's, that's what McDonald's that's 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 Nothing. I'm like, telling so you, I hate so this I, shit. I, 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 okay, I personally know him through you, through the Soul Rebel thing. So yeah. I know uh, you work with Kananji, uh, there was mm. Sakonja, yeah. and all these gathered were under Soul Rebel mm-hmm. right there. But McDonald was like, I asked you today, yeah. like, who is this Kananji, Kananji guy? guy? Because when I, was, when I was prepping and I was asking people that uh, the fans of the show, Say, Nobody knows these people niggas, like, bro. Uh, when you were talking to to young K, to, to high fan, he mentioned Gananj. When I went back, I'm like, yeah, young K mentioned this guy Gananj, but I've never listened to the guy. He's dope. Nah, I don't think so. He's dope until he he's, <laughs> he's stupid. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't think he's dope until he's stupid. I don't think he's dope. No, he can rap, bro. 
He can uh, rap? Because that, that's why he's in my circle in that town. Because mm. you can't be in my circle if you can't rap. Mm. You know? Hey. But zero big songs. So. Yeah, he, has, he, he doesn't have a hit song. Zero. Like 14, 15. My career, 15 years. I put you my first album. Your career, 15 years too, if it exists. Yeah. yeah. Zero songs, fam. Not, not a single song you can point out. And these are the kids who come at me. So. For me, it's not even hip hop, bro. It's just whatever it is. It's it's not part of my job. I just do it. When Aye. I'm doing with these guys, I just do it. <laughs> the Aye. science for me is how to be in my position, mm. deal with a nobody, yeah, cover him, and still have him remain a nobody. That's what the science. <laughs> is. You feel me? I for real. Oh, for <laughs> real. <laughs> wow. For real, for real. Hey. That if it's from Twitter, mm-hmm. it will stay on Twitter and guys off Twitter will not hear We're not anything yeah. real about it. So it's going to be there. Yeah. And I'll cover you. The song but I'll do with you. I'll, I'll, I'll do it you there. And you know, Twitter is like a week, two weeks Zata. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's you too. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll entangle you in that web of that timeline on Twitter. And you don't know what you're doing, but I know you got two weeks left of anybody saying anything about you. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, man. Jenna Black moved to a say, bro. <laughs> you were dissing with Jenna Black. He did one song that was sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> I pulled it out in the open. I clapped him. He moved to a say, bro. You <laughs> never heard another joint from him again. <laughs> <laughs> this Black Isco guy did a song about me. It was all over Twitter. I waited two weeks. This one was special. I waited two weeks. <laughs> Blake's break school. I think he's, he's I, I a guy. Lost, he, he has a beat. These right? guys he, are he dope. Cool. These guys are dope. Yeah. These guys are dope, bro. I, I want to have that guy. These guys are dope. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of hip hop, fam. Yeah. I appreciate what these guys do until it's about me. Yeah. Yeah. So he. Black is a diss there as well. Yeah. He's, a, he's supposed to come on the show. It I, came I from Twitter. <laughs> it came from Twitter. Yeah. I waited two weeks till it died down. I dropped I Am King, bro. You yeah. never heard about the guy again, bro. But good luck to him. I mean, I see him as like a wave, bro. I, I really got no bad blood against anybody dissing me. I enjoy this shit. <laughs> so, how, how's your relationship with Kanan right now? Fuck him, bro. <laughs> Real life. <laughs> <laughs> Real life, bro. Hey. <laughs> Real life, bro. I you see. Man, this, is, this podcast is crazy. I, <laughs> Real life. Real life. Hey. <laughs> Man, <laughs> this is crazy. Nah, but if I see him, I'll probably hug him. My little boy. Yeah, okay. this is hip hop. This is Damn. this is the culture, right? Yeah. But you see, all these stories I've told you, have you seen where there's a point where this is hip hop and this is my life? Or mm. is this one thing? Mm. That's what people don't know. Mm. You're fucking with my life, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. You want me not to get another $2,500 from the UN. Mm. You don't want the EU pay me 10 k an episode anymore. That's what you're doing. You don't even know it. Because for you, it's like you're trying to impress your friends. Yeah. I'm trying to stay alive, fam. I'm trying to feed my family yeah. my, and my people and, and hammer my responsibilities. Yeah, I get it, man. Have you but, have you ever heard of a beef between two other artists where Third Eye wasn't involved? I'm the only artist you can diss and get attention. And it's gotten into the head so much. I hope Gananji was the last one. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Talking about deals. Aye, talking about deals. Because everything about you is really trying to get paid Straight. for your craft. Straight. And you actually put your whole life into your project that you do. Straight. You have worked with the UN. Uh, you had a whole uh, deal project with TNM uh, for youth. And you have worked with banks trying to do all this um, sensitization and things. Most of these deals are one offs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't yeah. really have a relationship with. Any of these. Where they have a retainer or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just to clarify. Uh, the, the, there's one. I remember we 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 found you recording. Um, mm-hmm. Which one was that? At BSCC, uh, right? At BSCC. Uh, uh, those are un- the unplugged sessions. Uh, which oh, one was oh, that? Oh, that. Um, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> okay, I signed an NDA, so there's only so much I can say. Okay. But um, there's a time I went to the EU. I walk into your office, fam. I don't, I don't really get approached. I walk into your office and I make my case. That's the thing. That's yeah. the spirit. And, and and I think that's the differentiator between you and, and other, other people who are people waiting, that are waiting, who are posting like, on social media, oh, waiting for the for the, for the, the big guys are, are going to come to me and approach me for this for that. 
and you don't even know what you're going to give back to them when they approach you but you know what you have that she you can actually walk in i don't want to talk about nobody else okay but <laughs> <laughs> so yeah let's talk about it you, you went to the office i walk i walk to the to the gate can i see the deputy ambassador do you have an appointment no okay no you can okay fine i text her like i can't i, I walk by office today it seems you're busy oh i am but next time you're there see someone this and that person so i give it two weeks i walk there again um can i see so and so luckily they were doing um it was some public holiday no it was um one of these days not a, a holiday but an international day for some so they're doing a whole photo op and stuff so yeah she said yo come through i got like 10 minutes yeah and then 45 minutes later we're talking figures what this is my project that i told them i want them to pay me to do yeah and me i mean mandela not not the not third eye yeah yeah so they asked me how much am i thinking of them paying me to do my own shit i told them $10,000 an episode and i'll do five so what? verbally verbally i closed on the she told me 50k in bed Cause it's fifty thousand euros, bro. It's not much to these. No, no, no. Yeah. But we're talking about the yeah. creative space in the yeah. in Malawi. Zaos, man. And it's new banga zaos. I've been on my own lane since I started off. Everybody yeah. know. I'm just yeah. giving how good it gets. Yeah. Just so when I can inspire someone who yeah. thinks it's impossible here, mm. you know. Um, it's like okay, ten k. I want to give the visual guys a thousand dollars per episode. I want to give the audio guys in the band. A thousand dollars per episode. Mm. I want to give Third Eye six k, and I want to give me two k for handling Third Eye and the whole project. <laughs> so, I love that. They they oh, came man. back. They came back. They're like, "Yo, this we can't. We can't pay you twice." So they they prefer to do the deal with Mandela, knowing what he he still get Third Eye. Yeah. So they paid Mandela eight k to talk to Third Eye. For okay. Project. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but the, okay. the project never saw the light of day because we had created this. They the EU cannot contract me directly, so they did it through yes. a company in Luxembourg. Yes, yes, yes. Who based in SA. Mm. So now this company in SA felt they knew more about what needs to be done about gender based violence in Malawi than Third Eye already. You know, talking the same language. Yeah. So creative differences led to. I told him you can fire me if you want, from my own project. They fired me. And then yeah, I you, think were you, were I you think paid? I got I, I got sixty percent up front. What you talking about? Oh, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> so <laughs> you 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 actually you actually finished the the whole project. You did all the five episodes, or no, I did three. You did three, but they're they're there. Like they're there. They have them. They own them. Oh yeah, yeah. They own them. Yeah, essentially, yeah. They own them. Yeah. I've had very big fights with the EU over them. Mm. But I, I I reached out with the white flag and an olive branch yeah. two months ago mm. because I feel there's much more to do too, yeah. Yeah. than than be dwelling on that. Yeah, yeah. So I hope I hope the EU watch this episode also and see how remorseful I am about how that went with the third party that they yeah. contracted to contract me. Yeah, because the challenge that they have usually is that contractual um, arrangement. Usually they don't. The EU are the best guys to work with, bro. Yeah. They, they know exactly what's up with this country and what has to be done and who to do it with. Mm. Yeah. No, they're cool guys. Yeah. They're cool guys. Even some guys who I put on that project try to act nice, nice and take it until they realize that these guys had done a whole survey on my own project and I got 100% of every recommendation they asked on the street. And now these guys realize, oh damn, it was really Mandela's project, and we took the EU side. Hey, hey! Do you okay, want to drop paying them a thousand dollars, fam? Do, do you want to drop a name? Nah, it's not fair. But I know, I know who was shooting. But so I, see, I, I have I'm an idea. Go drop a name. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Okay, yeah, but he doesn't know. I know what he tried to. He tried yeah. to take over my project, but you can't beat third eye, bro. You, he wanted to take your project. Yeah, because he thought it was the third party who were doing the project and had picked me. He didn't understand when I said it's my project, mm. but it's really my project. Like the EU were paying were contracting me you. to do my own project, fam. Like guys can't fathom that. Mm. <laughs> mm. Whoa. Yo, next project they're giving me. And then funny thing is, 
I I talked to the deputy ambassador at the time a couple of times. Lunch, breakfast, but she can't interfere with the third parties, yeah. you know? So I understood that, but I was still very mad. And mm. I told her certain things on the phone that I regret now yeah. because I've been very aggressive the past couple of years. Yeah. Can't lie. Mm. Feel me? My mental health issues would hit the roof. Yeah. I'd take it out anybody who wanted. But <clears throat> I think last year, I think the deputy ambassador and I and the ambassador of the EU had a Zoom meeting for an hour. Because mm. I'd floated them a proposal for 132 million euros, a two year project. Um, I can tell you that because I ain't signed nothing for it. Yeah. I, I told them, you know what? I've seen you, I've seen you um, spend 60 million euros in 2020. Mm. Um, I don't know what you're spending this year. I think it's 64 million euros. Mm. That's about 124 million euros. But I haven't seen any visibility mm. for it. So I know your funders in the U in 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 the in the European Union are going to want to see visibility. Mm. So I can create no. It was a it was a hundred and six a hundred twenty six million. Mm. You lost no one hundred thirty two. Yeah. So they called me. We had a Zoom meeting last year just for them for an hour with the ambassador and deputy ambassador telling me what he, they want to do it, but it's a gap year. Mm. Yeah. But it was a text. It wasn't like a, a proposal, like two pages, nothing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you, even th- even, th- even th- the th- EU <laughs> deal I got for 50K was a text. Actually, that's what I want to ask <laughs> you. I want to ask you this. Um, do, you, do you think or do you know, maybe there are others that you know that we don't know. Are you the most paid hip hop artist in Malawi? I think he is. What do you mean hip hop? Okay. Are you the most is. paid artist in Malawi? <laughs> Yeah, man. I'm the highest paid. Like, nobody's ever pulled in $8,000 for nothing. No one can get, can get no. an $8,000, man. And so my we question, pay, my, my question is, there are, like, a lot of people that are artists that are struggling to get deals done and all this. Do you sit down, write big proposals? How do you get these deals? $40 million for five shows. I, I wrote a text, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a text. Bro. Wrote a text. Okay, are you also the most connected with like the big corporates bro, and organizations? Bro, I'm the only artist in Malawi who's even been inducted into the Malawi Mandela Washington Fellowship. Oh yeah. What you yeah. talking about? I've been a. People make jokes about he ain't never won an award. You mean these wooden things, guys? Give you a fifty k? Nah. Bro. <laughs> nah. My only award is from the White House. In the states for yeah. for my hip hop, changing lives in Malawi. Yay. Yeah, you recognized for that in the home of hip hop at the White House. What I do in this third world country with it. Wow. <laughs> hey, <Fuck. laughs> I think the, the kids today don't know that. Okay, let, okay, let, let me break down a little bit of what I know. Yeah. Okay, I, I said you've done um, projects with the EU. You've done projects with uh, TNM. You've done projects with. Um, uh, all these embassies giving me money. Old mutuals giving Old me mutual. money. Yeah. And then there's a song, twenty twenty. Twenty twenty one. Oh yeah. Twenty twenty one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um. Um. Tell me about that song. What was it? It's a theme song for an African Union project. How did that come about? African Union, man. Yeah. Who does it? I say, who are you, man? Okay. <laughs> ah. um, there's a, there's a, there's an organization that has really believed in me for a while. Mm. I think they first sent me out to SA for a conference in 2018. Mm. Open Society Foundation. So OSISA? They, OSISA is yeah, South OSISA, Africa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then they got East Africa. East Africa, yeah. they yeah. got West Africa. Mm. There's Osiwa, so, Osisa. Yeah, Osisa and, and, yeah. yeah. But it's Open Society Foundation based in New York. Yeah. So they took me, 2018, we did, we did about a week of some conferences in SA. Yeah. And then, I don't know how, okay, it's the same organization. So East Africa took me next. Yeah. And then the funny thing was the AU conference I went to was the West African 
taking me as a West African. Yeah. They they took 40 people, including me. I was the only one from this region. So I just thank God for that. I never thought about it like that. Mm. Thank you, God, for that. But I went to the conference like a week. I think our per diems were like 250, you know? A day? Yeah, a day. I get paid for all this shit, fam. Since 2014, hey. fam. <laughs> hey! <laughs> like... Hey. If I was materialistic, I'd have houses, I'd have cars, bro. I'd have mm. good clothes. Oh, so you're materialistic, shit. right? I don't give a fuck about anything, bro, except my people and how they're doing. This is the thing, because that's the thing that I've observed about yeah. you. Like, because you're, you're not a gadget, whatever thing that people... Yeah. You know my, that you're a my, my Samsung A10S works perfect. Not perfect. It struggles, but it still works after four years after I bought it for like 80,000 kwanja, bro. Why should I... Yeah, because people don't understand that. I want to emphasize this because you know that pe- the other people who don't believe in accumulation of worth, right? Like buildings, I need to my, have my core, wealth whatever. will come at once. Mm. Yeah, I'm working towards it. It will always come at once. Ah. Yeah, because I need when when I when when you say wealth, it can't finish. Yeah, I can't finish it. My responsibilities can't finish it. Mm. You know, so yeah. But when when they took me to um the AU HQ, yeah, were like about five hundred people delegates. They took forty other organizations. Um, big conversations. They they had this um project um um one million by twenty twenty one. Yeah, where they were gonna equip one million people with opportunities in education, entrepreneurship. Yeah, engagement even like for youth activists. Yeah. And um, employment as well, like yeah. four E's. Okay. So I soaked up all the good info, went back to say where where I was staying with my girlfriend at the time. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm seeing an opportunity here. That time I'm broke as fuck. Mm. And she sponsored me to do a song. I'm like, you know what? I really feel like if I do a song for this project, I can push it far. So I, I, I spent quite a lot of money that she gave me on that. And I produced the song and I sent it. And then they started using it for the adverts. It was the first time they ever used a, a song for any theme whatsoever. The AU. Mm. Yeah. So that's what's made me the unofficial ambassador for the youth. Whoa. Yeah. The AU. But people people can't see this, right? Like when people <laughs> think about their die, they're just like, oh, there was a dope rapper a while ago who was yeah. doing who was who was the rapping nicely and now is like nowhere and whatever. And when you had uh, a crazy... Dog, I'm, not, I'm not in the show business. I don't pose in front of my new car. I don't pose in front of my new deal. I don't pose. Companies give me money. Have you ever seen a dummy check or, or newspaper? No, article? no, that, that's that's the thing. You're going to be carrying a dummy okay. check, like for for me, I know some of these things because I'm I'm like in those pockets, like oh, there's this. You have okay. to be. <laughs> That's why but I let the fans assume I've what they want. I've never seen that I going to receive a dummy check like this company no. has given. A, it's just gonna go out there like, and when he puts up this show and all oh, these like ambassadors. You're they, like, how did they, they get these guys? Like, okay. FDH in 2018, they were so generous enough to give me 3.5 just to say the name on stage in Baraka and Zuzu. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that, that was my pitch. Oh. I was like, yo, I'm gonna say your name, and they gave me 3.5. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're a good closer, so. Oh, yay. Wow. Okay. Hey. I, I, I think we need, we, need, we need third eyes in, in like, no, in no, this no. boardroom. No, no, no. The thing is, people that are having conversations in the creative space, right? Bro, they I'm need a, a, this kind of guys yeah. to talk to them. Yeah. And then do what? You know what they'll do? They'll do nothing. That's because, the thing. Because Even if the opportunity is here, let's write, let's do this. The people don't do it. Yeah. And do, they complain. Do you know where all this comes from? It comes from all those years people told me I was crazy and I was, I lost my mind doing what I do. Yeah. All those years where I was getting peanuts mm. is why I can cash out anything I want now. Mm. It's called legacy. Mm. Yeah, it's undisputed. Mm. I've never had to go into an office and say, I'm Wawud Wawud. Yeah. You go there, they know who you yeah, are. straight. Most of the times, these guys have been uh, vibing on your songs for, for a long time. SKC is how old now? Of. Uh, 47? 40 something, 40 something 43 yeah. or somewhere 40 no, four. about no, 40, 47 47 yeah. 10 47 I think um, so year. yeah 47 this year yeah. so he was 32 when I dropped up, dropped my first album you think he's never heard it yeah he did yeah I, I invited SKC to um to be guest of honor at my show when I was with the Kamuzu Academy Orchestra yeah, yeah. 
uh, what was that, 2017? 2017, yeah. He couldn't there. come because he had to go to um this memorial for Bingo yeah. the same yeah. day. Yes. But he sent his wife and his, his wife PS. was there. Yeah. Oh. And do you hear what his PS read the speech? Yes. It was very detailed about my career. Yes. <laughs> These are the people yeah. who know me. Yeah, I, 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 I was there and I actually, I remember I cried that day. I see. But, I remember but, I cried that day because the thing that I heard, I was like, <laughs> But I said, these what? kids of today, they disrespect this guy. I don't I, give I, I a shit. I, I, <laughs> Their I, I, parents I, respect me, bro. They they can disrespect me all they want. Their parents respect respect yeah, me, bro. You know, you know what? I had a lot of respect between me and Brighton Saka until his son fucked up our relationship. Yeah. Now, I had to send him a VN talking shit. I regret, but I had to because my pride had me do it. Mm. Ay, man. Yo. Tell, tell your son. <laughs> Who's been calling me motherfucker on a song? Yeah. Goody, when I came for his mother's funeral, your wife's funeral, I did not see this happening ever in my life. Oh. Yeah. And we cannot be cool again after that. Mm. They don't respect me, but the parents do. I work with their parents, bro. Right now I'm in the railway industry. Who you think I'm dealing with? Them? You're in the ra- railway industry. Yeah, bro. I'm not going to get inducted into the Mandela Washington Fellowship in 2016 and keep rapping, bro. Yeah, that's the thing I wanted. To ask. What is happening right now? Like you're yeah, silent because you've been in Blantyre, and you, you like it's just now that you have your show coming up. That is, oh, well, we postponed it actually. You did. Yeah, oh, we just okay. haven't uh, communicated officially. I think um, the workshop aspect of it yeah. will be bigger. I need to talk to you about some advice here and there over the next few months as well. Wow, great, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah but then Dude. apart from that, you have, you have, you've really just been. Down uh, there, and I think I've been asking like, what's happening in Blantyre? Like, okay, <laughs> I, I, okay. are you willing honestly, to break honestly, down with that? Honestly, like, oh. I went to Blantyre because um, I got a partnership with an American company, um, they called Zipline Green mm. Inc. They opened um, a mother company based in um, registered in Ireland that's going to do um, projects in Africa for the railway sector. Yeah. I've got a partnership with them for about 21 countries. I, I was approached as a broker. What? In, in 2018. And at first I negotiated 10% of the actual project. Whoa. And mm-hmm. then I went to 51% on my third deal. On, I... my, on, my, on, my, on my actual deal. Oh. Yeah, so I ended up owning 51% of their project. A railway project. Dude. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I use the 51% now to make partnerships in the countries I have to close. Uh-huh. For example, in Mozambique, I gave away 10% to a big <laughs> No, no, I give up, man. I give up. Ah, sh- ah, I give up, I say. <laughs> what are you doing? What's that? I gave 10% to a big guy there. He closed. In February, by the way, we closed our first uh, MOU with the government in February. Right now, we're just doing um, the the investment process yeah. to release the cash. The project there is 112.5 billion euros. I had to give away another 24% to these funders. I think I'm on 15%. Right now? Yeah. But you, you're using it to brok, right? To, to do a to, to Yeah, broker. I'm done brokering everything. I work with 15% from yeah. a project that's going to take five years to build and it's worth um, an investment of 112 billion euros. That's what I'm doing right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> in, in Malawi, it was, it was, in Malawi, we're trying to invest 26.5 billion euros. Yeah. I've been talking to them for four years. This year, they told me the people, that's why I was in Blanta because I was trying to, I was trying to, ish, I was trying to flex on the PVPC. <laughs> to be honest. So they, they're like, yo, at the end, the last signature had to come from the Department of Economic Planning. Yeah. So they decided to agree with the PVPC. Would either, they'll, they'll fund the feasibility on their own. Okay. <laughs> I don't know which, which money, but it's definitely yeah. your money, your taxpayers' money, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we're about uh, to do yeah. it with no cost to them, but yo, they, they say, well, no, we're gonna yeah, do the so best on our own. It's like an ugly chick. Mm. So it's like, you know what? Let's let's do Mozambique. You know, I put my country first every time. I'm not yeah. 
I can't even feel good. I've never even felt good about the Mozambique one because I couldn't do it in Malawi, bro. Yeah. Do you know what we're doing now with our trains that can go 140K per hour? Mm. We're going around Malawi to Zambia and Zimbabwe. That's what is what's going to happen. That's yeah. what's happening. But they denied it here. They said, though, though. Anyway. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, <laughs> cool, cool. Well, why do you think? Why do you think I, I I wrote an open letter to the president at uh, that time it was Arthur Peter Mutarika in 2018? Do you see that on Facebook? Do you yeah. remember the open letter? Yeah, yeah, the open letter was about that deal. It just made it look political. Like I told my guys, I have to remove these guys because this project never go through. With these guys, the shit they're showing me, I had to remove them. So I wrote that letter to start that process, and we removed them. <laughs> e. Wow. Oh. Okay. Cool. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I, I think let's let's go to the, to the other issues. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But the thing is, for me, is people don't know how big this guy. Is. Yeah. And people are saying he's a legend, but, but people don't really understand what it is. I was at the um. um uh, she not got a show. Yeah. When he was on stage. So I was standing there, like just the, uh, at the VIP where the artist and he was there rapping. Mm. And I was sitting with some people. Yeah. Born around 2000. And so they were there. So they're like, okay, I know Third Eye. I know Third Eye. I've heard that about Third Eye, but this is my first time I'm seeing him perform sure. on stage. Yeah. I've heard some of his songs, but I didn't know he can rap. I, I don't know. How long was your set? Where is this? Uh, at the golf, golf club. club. The last time I went at golf club. I should have got a... Oh, it's 30 minutes. 30 minutes. It's one long song. It was like, like a one long, one long yeah. Huh? And yeah. these people 30 like, minutes. no, I can hear everything he's saying and everything is deep. And That's so insane. people, like, these were like kids. Not really kids because yeah. they're not like uh, in their 20 somethings. Right? Yeah. But they were like, I think this is the best rap I've ever heard on stage in Malawi. And it's that consistent for that long. And I know it's that I, but I didn't know he goes that deep. I see. This guy, I see. So yeah, these man. are like kids, but that's what they've heard about that I, but they didn't know, okay, most of his songs. Mm. But do they know the stories like this? Because <laughs> for some of us that know these stories, we say, yeah, that's that I for you. Like, yeah, he does that. <laughs> because we cannot know the stories. I feel you. Yeah. But do people know? Oh, this story like behind the hip hop and man. everything. They don't. That. They don't. They just think it's a, some uh, guy. Weren't you at the British Council when um, Reno was 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 the director? No, no. We we actually we're went in there, yeah. after her. But we we we. we I, I think I was like doing a lot of other things that were attached to the British he Council. He was working trying, with the British Council before came for projects. In, yeah. yeah. So, Reno, Reno, Reno sat on. Um, I had a meeting with. Um, I took Guamba. Mm. I took. Um, I can't remember. Crazy G was there? No, no, no. No? I took Guamba as uh, the CEO of my company because mm-hmm. I made him the CEO of the label. Mm. I took JJ because I, I took I took three people with me. Yeah. There was Phil Smith there. Yeah, the, from the Who had called the meeting, yeah. Which was DFID. There was Massa, there was Ben. Benson, Lindsay, and Massa. Yeah. And then there was Lucy Hayes. The finance, Let's see his, yeah, mm. and those Rena, the British Council, British Council of Kendrick director. There, it was a twenty-four month project for one hundred forty million pounds, and this was the last meeting. Mm. They agreed to do it, and they wanted me to do it through the DFID mm-hmm. because at that time the Parliament had changed. Um, the House of Commons had made it okay for them not to do it that cut governments directly. So with the first company they're going to do things with mm. since that changed. It was mm. 140 million pounds that I put in a project for two, 24 months. Whoa. Mm. Rena touched my sister. She's like, no, 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 we'll run it through British Council. Bridge Council. <coughs> oh. Ish, but just, she doesn't like me. <laughs> oh. Hey. I, I, I was hesitant to ask you about your relationship with the British Council. <laughs> But now that you've studied it, so let's give on. Because I know what happened. Because I, th- I think there's some stuff that happened. Oh, because yes. I yes. Yes. <laughs> So that was the beginning of it. Because I've been asking myself, And then, and then Lucy like, Hayes happened? asked me, how come you haven't got any females on your team? I was like, 
the females on our team know nothing about this level of, <laughs> of business we're about to do. Mm. It's not my fault. Oh. Okay, that's understandable. What are you going to do about faith-based organizations? It's 140 million pounds, bro. And Ma says, I said, you know what? We're going to do this project. We're going to, we're going to do the paperwork. We're going to run. No, no, no. We'll do it through a British council. No, no. It's our pro- I said, it's my project. Hey, I'm like, yo. Hey. <laughs> Phil Smith asked me four times in six months, like, what? how far is it with British council? We just need you to do that with them so we can have a broader template, mm. a template for broader funding. I'm mm. like, yo, she's your person. So it never happened. Yeah, no, it never happened. The impact didn't happen on this country and my bank account because of one person not liking me. That's that's what, what happened happens. with Rina. I'm very honest, bro. I'm very very honest, bro. You feel me? What he's what he wants to talk about is is how one day. Okay, I used to have a very good relationship with the British High Commission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, oh, shit. Hey. <laughs> you know when the Americans took me in 2016, mm. I was I was one of theirs firmly now. Yeah, and there was a lot of jealousy from the British High Commission side. Mm. A lot of people in high places believe uh, I'm going to end up running this country. Mm. You get me? Mm. Yeah. So these relationships because of your thoughts, start, and, yeah. yeah, not my thoughts. I won't say why, but they mm. really believe mm. I'm one of the people that's going to end up running this country. Mm. Okay. Mm. I think you can. You're yeah. blocking deals, man, for different countries. Come on, you can. Like big deals, because okay, and 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 I think there's the the, the challenge with the, with us is we think running the country is actually vying for the presidency and whatnot. Yeah. But it's possible to actually run this country and not being the president from the being the one like, yes. who's, here, who's on the street. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like you can sit there and just the president not, not like, giving too much hey, bro, away. <laughs> tomorrow you're doing A, B, C, D, and you're like, yeah. oh yes, I will. You can get these politicians. You can yeah. do it. Jaguar has blocked me before on WhatsApp for 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 being too persistent about my railway project. All right. Mm. <laughs> I, I, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think we can exhaust this this yeah, episode. Now. I think this good conversation is this is a part a, one, guys. Yeah, this has to be a part two. Otherwise, there's a lot that I've been asked that I need. Do you, know, you, know, what, do you know, what, know what Holly Ted couldn't get over? Uh huh. So I'm at the Queen's birthday party. Mm. I brought my mom. My plus one was my mom. She's over there talking to everyone. Um, <laughs> I end up in a conversation with Phil Smith because he's going to Ghana now. Yeah, yeah, he's in Ghana. So Holly Tech comes over. She's like, yo, I heard you're doing this show and I wanted to perform with you. Phil Smith told me you don't want to do that. You told us you don't want to do that. This guy's an actual artist and you look stupid. Yo, don't get carried away and have to do that just to feel yeah, sorry. Yeah. So for me, that's what Phil Smith is the one guy respecting the whole establishment had a diff ID. So if he's telling me, yo, don't go kiss an ass just to it's like I wasn't gonna kiss ass in the first place, but now nah, I know I ain't never gonna kiss <laughs> her ass. And so that that happens, like whatever, whatever. And then they invited me. Holy Ted invited me to this lunch, bro. I can't remember what we're doing, but they're picking all our brains. It's free consultancy that they do. Mm. They invite us, <laughs> us ignorant ones. Mm. They invite us and say, we want to talk about the youth and this and that and that. So there's education on this table. There's politics on that one. There's whatever, whatever. So me, I know what it is. Mm. It's consultancy. Mm. Mm. You're looking about two thousand dollars for that, if they do right. Yeah, yeah. pounds being that the mm. yeah. British High Commission. Yeah. So now you're not giving me two thousand pounds, but everybody around me is excited to have lunch with you. That's good for them. Mm. So I show up thirty minutes late, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Showed up my suit. Sat, uh, everybody's eating. I went and helped myself. And I sat at the table where there was nobody and I started eating, bro. Holly Tech comes over, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and what did what did the 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 
the the thing on the table say for that table? It said politics. Right. Okay. I'm eating. She's like, yeah, hey, we're just going back and forth about nothing. And then she starts. And then I just push my food to the side because now it's like maybe rude. Mm. When I push my food to the side, she started asking me serious questions. And I was consulted for her. That's what I noticed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's like, so she asked me. The second question she asked me, and it was the last question. She, she's like, why are Malayans so passive towards these administrations that are oppressing them? What? What a question. I told her, listen, me, I can go on Facebook right now and start a riot. <clears throat> with one post that's mm. the influence I have over multiple generations mm. everybody knows what I stand for and I put my country first so they know I ain't doing it for no show business or financial gain when I do it but if I start that right this is one of the first places we're passing through to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what so that's the last time the high commission ever had love for me whoa because I threatened them. Whoa. And you know that that's British ground, right? Yes. You leave your passport at the gate. Yes. I was you, in you Britain telling them there. I will invade Britain too. Like I don't fuck Yeah, because around. you go there, you invade Yeah, Britain. I'm not I'm not going to go against the government and not go against the people that support them to do what they do, like I'm ignorant. Yeah. It's like it's like when Whoa. It's like when a US ambassador asked me, How are you interested in advocating? against corruption because we can fund that. I'm like, ah, gee, everything I brought you to fund, you want to fund me talking about corruption? When it's your money, why are you guys not doing anything about your taxpayers' money going missing? Why do you need me to make noise on the street to give me money for? And then they know that I know. <laughs> Whoa, man. Hey, shh. I said, how many, how many minutes are we doing? Hey, shh. Because for me, as far as, as as far as this conversation is going, right, um, I had questions like the beef with Guam, but I can't ask these questions. They're not really they're like, they're like thing, irrelevant. Bro. They're irrelevant right now. Really we can talk can't about it, man. <laughs> they're like deeper, bigger things to ask and talk about. Because I was there at that event, the one that he's talking about. You were there? Yeah. Or the I, high commissioners? They, this, this was the event. This. I got pictures for it. Oh yeah, that's exactly the one. Right. <laughs> this, I was there, so I know these stories. It was a DFID that did the whole youth advisory board, and I was like, "Oh shit. yeah, it was not just the British High Commission, it was DFID." Yeah, it was DFID. But like, yo, bro, this is my country. There was Philip bro. Smith in there. Yeah, I, I tell you something, man. This is my country. Yeah, and I mean it in so many ways when I say my country. Okay, mm. you can decipher it how you want. Yeah. But there's things that I can never allow to happen to me or my countrymen in this country. There's no way. I'm not a racist. I'm I'm cool with everybody. Yeah. But there's no way. There's no way. There's no. And that's way. a thing. That's a that's a character there's that no is missing way. in most yeah, of the people. Yeah. Specifically, the NGOs who just who can just get any money to do whatever that they think. Without, there, there are no questions asked the, about the money about. Why do you think that's part? Of, that's the case. Do you think these people are not eating too? I mean, come on, bro. <laughs> Probably they're eating, yeah. No, we, we talked about it. We <laughs> they, talked about they, it, I think, in our stopped, previous episodes. They were, so about happy, how... they were so happy that they can't give money to government anymore yeah. because there's actually more monitoring and evaluation in government than NGOs. Yeah. Think, what, 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 what happens with the deals? When a deal comes these days, U.S. funded, what, what are these funds? They bring in their own consultants from the U.S., their own companies and whatnot. They come, they pay them the same money. So they will fund us, let's say, $2 million U.S. dollars. And what they're getting back is close to like $1.5 million into consultancies and their and own 500 people. That, 500 to, comes here for implementation. For organizations who also have to pay people. Pay people so to do you, you can ask in the construction sector, if you have friends there, you can ask what it means when I bring a 26.5 billion euros project to Malawi and... I make it clear to my own company that at least 20% is for local content. You can ask them what that means. Mm. Okay. I'm uneducated formally, but I do that. <laughs> do it. Wow. <laughs> this is that's, crazy, that's, that's putting about, how much is it? That's, that's putting about 7.8 billion euros directly into, into people's hands. Local. Yeah. Wow. 
That's that's three three annual budgets for your government, bro. <laughs> All right, okay, cool. I think uh, let's let's try to conclude. Uh, yeah. I had a, a bunch of questions, uh, but I'm gonna I'm not gonna ask them because of um, uh, the nature of our conversation. <laughs> because uh, honestly, I've been excited. What did you expect, my brother, man? <laughs> but, yeah. Talk to me. I said something else, but this is what I'm getting. So yeah, I'm getting what I'm supposed to get. So I'm mindful because the electricity can go off uh, at the yeah, anytime or uh, at the top of the hour. So I'm trying just to be careful with that. But um, I'm gonna ask you maybe uh, maybe one or two questions in sure, closing, brother. right? I came to talk to you. Yeah, it's basically <clears throat> one is what's the future of your music right now? <laughs> okay, the reason why. From from 2016 when I got inducted into the Malawian uh, Mandela Washington Fellowship, I keep calling it Malawian. Yeah. The MWF. Yeah. I've had to sway into things like these, like the yeah. railway. I feel like the the railway project in 2018 when I signed that deal was the only thing I had to be doing, because apart from Malawi and Mozambique, I got to close this in 19 other countries. Two months ago, my well, my my partner said 25. I don't know where. I don't know what's happening. Looks like they added four more, <laughs> and and you know you should know I got equity in all these companies. E. The the project actually is worth over a trillion euros, and since we closed Mozambique, the investor why it's taken since February until now to do this process is because the investor is now so confident in us closing through Mandela ones of these other countries that they want to give us the whole project money at the same time. Canary Islands, Cayman Islands, stuff like that. So when I say in the song that I released on Monday, yeah. no man's an island, but diamond's a canary, it means canary diamonds, canary islands, Mandela Mwanza, it will happen. The music is just me telling the universe what I already know and it already knows. And then other people when they hear it can decipher it how they want. That's the future of our music. Crazy, man. <laughs> Crazy. Hey, see. It's, it's my actual passion. It's not, yeah. it's going back to be my passion. Yeah. And the worst feeling in the world has been for four years, people asking me, yo, when I see our music, mm. you know, and, and what why, are you doing crazy why are you stuff leaving down there? For, you know, like the younger kids who don't understand the way you do, it's like, mm. but I put out three albums on the low last year. Mm. One of them was on WhatsApp even. You know? Okay. Yeah, I did four albums last year. Yes, yes, I yes. I put out three of them, and then one is coming out this year is Return of the OG. Mm. But I did all this music last year. I finished by March. I did, yeah, man. Finished by March. Right. Did 12 albums? months. Yeah, 12 months. Okay. Yeah. I had time in 2020 and 2021. I did like 12 months. Four albums. Nango Hey. Okay. Are, are you disappointed that Radio App did not take take off and do you still have that shift yeah, somewhere for the future okay. or you drop Why the radio project? app did not take off is strictly on the development side. So it's a bit frustrating, but I believe everything happens at its own time. Like you the know? developer of the, of the app? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was it? I can't mention now oh. that I said it's because it's of the development side. Yeah, all right. I was always good with TNM and Eto gave me a deal that has no termination date. Okay. Whoa. Twice. E. <laughs> 2014 and 2020. E. 2014 was for five, they were taking five percent, and then they tried to take seventy percent and all that stuff. And then 2020, I got them down to three point five percent, and I signed that. Dude. Yeah. Three point five. People, this kids of shit wouldn't know what kind of how nah. big this guy. Yeah, but their parents understand what it means to get a deal with Eto where they're taking three point five percent. Their yeah. parents know. I don't need these kids to know. <laughs> For real. <laughs> <laughs> For real, bro. Bro. And, and when and when you show uh the return bro. of the OG and Blanda doesn't work, kids are flooding over Twitter, flooding over and talking about stuff, not knowing how big you are. Yeah, that was the sound guys. Um, I didn't know they had a relationship with the guys doing the AKA shows. There's a lot of undercutting in my world. You mm. feel me? I'm right at the top where everybody wants to be, bro. I can't lie to you. Mm. I think the only person in that vicinity with everything included is Tay Grant. Mm. Mm. But 
if you charge Dennis a million kwacha for sound equipment, you're going to charge me too. Yeah. Yeah. So when when I deal with someone who has a very bad relationship with the guy doing the AKA show, I'm like, yo, let me give you 100K for logistics and then give you the 500K after. Mm. It's like, no problem, bro. And then the next day, and then the day before I see him posting a lot about the AKA show, mm. I'm like, oh, don't tell me these guys in good books again. I can just see it coming. Yeah. And then when there's no sound system there, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11. Bro, I'm looking for a sound system in Blanta at 1 p.m. fam. There's a crowd outside like this. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all good. Me, I've lost too many times to care about another loss, bro. Yeah. So wow. much to talk about. Um, <laughs> last one, man. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna come back, uh, and I have to promise the obvious. We'll have to come back. I'm not this. coming back. Mm. No, 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 no. <laughs> we, need, we need to. I need to block this deal right now. You, you have to come. Back. I'm not coming back. This is probably the most candid interview yeah. with Third Eye of all time. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah, because like we could talk about music, but I think. There's, there's so much this bigger is things. The behind the music, it's like everything that uh, yeah. we... Maybe later on, it could be like getting updates from you on how all these things are going and what's building and whatnot. Nope. It won't happen. Yeah, you can't even follow up because this these are things that are happening behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. People, he has opened up for now. The rest will take care of itself. Hey, man, I do not mind people speculating about who I am, what I'm doing. Cause it's safer for me that way. Mm. Mm. You get what I mean? Uh, you, wow. you, you, uh, <laughs> you're something else. I can tell people about this railway project because we closed it in February. They can do nothing about it. They can it. do nothing yeah. about it. But if, you, if it wasn't, I you know what would happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Malawi. People... I, can, I can talk about it now because I got to know from Malawi we'll do it ourselves. So fuck Malawi. I can tell Malawi what he, what yeah. he it's like. It's not, it's not yeah. my issue. Yeah. And you the president blocked you. No, it wasn't the president. Okay. okay, I mean, I mean, come on, you can't repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we'll leave it up. <laughs> okay, yeah. situation is, yeah, it'll get to a situation where, ah, come on, you can't go there. Okay, it's okay, <laughs> it's okay. It's I'm okay. just, I'm just joking when I yeah. say the president blocked me on WhatsApp. By then, I'm just joking. Yeah, I um, get it. Yeah, I get it. But I, I hope. Wow. I hope things will turn will turn better for you to contribute to Malawi as well because I think you have you had so many innovative projects like the app you were like he about said stuff. there's so yeah. much you can do in the private sector yeah to develop this country yeah right all I do it now is restrictions to what I can do mm. Mm. the railway sector is privatized yeah. But in essence, it is not. It's still government control. Yeah, yeah. So to an extent, because matter. you have to go and get their consent or whatever. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. Mm. There's a lot of loopholes in the constitution itself. Yeah. The president doesn't have the powers you think he has. In- interestingly, he so might I heard. block me because mm. I'm being persistent about something he has no control over. Mm. Crazy. <laughs> How would you want people to remember you? I know you are a legend by now. I don't want people to remember me in any way, bro. I don't give a shit. You don't. But they will remember me. I know that for a fact. Mm. They will remember. You can't forget me. It's no way. <laughs> it's no way. No way. Crazy man. So your your life your life is a is a movie. <laughs> Dennis, people okay, can write a you know, movie about this you guy. Know, you know what? I'm like from. From this conversation today, I've had conversations with Does people. Does Dennis yeah. look surprised about anything? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. No, the, the, the only thing like that really, no that really surprises himself. me is uh, I thought your up- upbringing was like the smooth upbringing because mm. that's what people say there. That's what people like, say. Because yeah. when you're up in my mom in, started kicking me out of the house when I was thirteen, bro. The thing is, when you're up in all this English and you have all these like deeper things, people say, "Oh, Third Eye is an artist who grew up in the, in the states dog. and whatever." Like he he's, he's grew up, he grew up in the states. He was in the SA, so you like had all these things, and that's why you're like, "No, Third Eye and the artist were." Meaning, you 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 speak for people that are educated, highly educated, people that 
I don't know why. And we yeah. have we have always been told people you that would assume that on a, so are the, like, are the educated people you're talking about. Mm. The other side of the coin, like the ghetto, they also believe in and mm. yeah. I'm just both sides of the coin with the same songs. Yeah. I do deep someone who is very literate will understand it to the fullest. Mm. Someone who won't understand it to the fullest will still feel it and know what that word deep means. Because mm. I repeat it so many times till they get it. Mm. Then they'll feel deep too. And then they'll change how they live. Yeah. That's how it works, bro. Ah, I have so many things <laughs> to ask you. But, <laughs> but, yeah. but I agree with you. I agree. And I understand you. We would do this conversation and be once off conversation. Yeah, man. At, at I mean, one point, whenever uh, you feel like having another conversation, we'll talk about things. But I'll leave it to you uh, for now. One question that people I know. has happened, huh? How many weeks you tried? Hey, Dennis Yo, has up, been working man. hard for this one, man. Big up, man. I appreciate I've, it. I'm always I've humble. I've been on this, like, okay, yeah. let's see, let's yeah. see, let's see. Because people have been asking, I've been asking for this thing. And I think he spoke, he spoke to you in, in Blanda, right? Yeah. When we were in Blanda, when we yeah. were shooting Daredevils and, and Hyphen. Because mm-hmm. we were trying to get you there. But yeah, it didn't work. So I'm so happy yeah, that you I, 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 I hate interviews, bro. Yeah, I understand. Mm. I know people it's always... about maybe the 12th or 13th I've done my whole career and it's like 15 years. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, but one last question. I know people are going to crucify me if I don't ask this one because it, it came through through the group. I was talking about your mental health and, and the time that we were guessing that you had a, a physical um, issue with your mom. Physical? Um, what do you mean? Expand? Oh, you know, the, the allegations that you... You slapped, I think, your mom. Oh, uh, Guamba said on Twitter that yeah. I beat up my mom. Yeah. 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 I think she'd answer that. Um, it's, it's a very touching subject in my family. Yeah. No one was impressed. Because mm. even my mom, my mom is a lion, bro. You don't slap my mom. <laughs> <laughs> she was very offended. She was very offended. She told me it's jealousy. So mm. She told me it's jealousy. It's nothing Crazy. I think about. Like, it's cool. And you left it like that. You never addressed it, I think. I almost sued him. But mm. it's like, you know what? That money ain't even his, bro. What am I suing for? <laughs> it's my little bro, man. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <You feel me>? <laughs> <laughs> for real. Yeah. Like, uh, my mom has also tried, wanted to sue him a couple of times because yeah. of something that happened um, in the car that she was driving that was in my possession. Mm. You know, um, she got sued over it. He, he has never had interest in helping us sort that situation out. Mm. You know, so sometimes I'm the one who's angry and she's the one telling me no leave it. And sometimes she's the one who's angry, I'm telling I'm telling her leave it. But it's not I feel we don't even think about that shit no more. I can't be bothered. I heard the guy can can't walk, but um <sighs> Yeah. Do you understand how much you have to hate me after everything I did for you to tell people Uri, I beat up my mom? That, do you understand? That's too personal. Yeah. And do you understand what what Guambo is trying to do to me as a person, as a career, as a personality? But it didn't happen because it was that, that was killing you. It was killing the career. Yeah, because uh, if you work with all these uh, organizations that and really- you was a CEO. That particular time you were negotiating a deal with uh and I go with my mom, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going so good, man. I really don't give a fuck at the end of the day. Everybody who knows me knows, bro. You feel me? There's times I wanted to beat him up. There's times where I wanted to hug him and tell him I'm sorry too. Mm. Yeah, but when Martin died, I slept at his house, bro. It's like no hard feelings. Mm. Mm. The the song Flowers, where I'm like, yo, um, he used to hit me on his mom's phone, I put him on. He used to need me all the time, scared to walk alone. And now they act like I ain't giving rooms in my home. You can get your flowers from your brother-in-law. That's like last year, mm-hmm. you see? So even when things change now, I ain't going to change anything. I sell on a song like I don't mean it. Yeah. Just let it go. Like. So you actually meant that line, like you can take the flowers from... Yeah, you can go get them from his brother-in-law. He's not getting no flowers from me. That's a oh. very good point to end it. No. <laughs> I want to speak to you with um, I believe I believe this podcast um, are here specifically this podcast. Yo, 
this thing of me beating up my mom, like you guys actually believe that way? You can ask me in a conversation like this. No, no, no. This physical altercation that happened with you. No, no, no. I, I don't believe it. That's, <laughs> what, that's the thing. When I, Damn, when I invite people, <laughs> when I invite people here, I want people to own their story, to own their truth, right? That's why I ask mm, people. Yeah. Like, that's that's who I am. Mm. And I've been accused several times of side, of, of being siding. neutral like that. <laughs> people yeah. say, you don't have to be neutral. You'd be like, because, yeah. but that was an allegation. That's why I've called it an allegation. Because there, there's no mm. uh, evidence, evidence that, that we be saw brought forth. Right? We heard from <clears throat> your mother or anybody saying. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. This mm. for, for this podcast, uh, let me give you my yeah. affirmations. Mm-hmm. Man, I believe you're destined for greatness. I've listened to you when I, I was in primary uh, to secondary, and I know you think differently, mm-hmm. like the Iman brand. Mm-hmm. You think differently. I did th- philosophy in my in my, my bachelor as well. And I know when you when you're speaking, when you're thinking, the whole history that you carry with you mm. is huge. And I want to give you that affirmation that you have a lot to do for yourself. Mm-hmm. But also for people around you and the country and the globe, earth is in your hands, man. There's so much. For me, when I look at you, sometimes I equate you to, to, to Kanye West. I'm like, people don't understand this guy. But this guy is big, he's huge, has crazy ideas that would change things. Imagine if this guy was the was the leader of artist in Malawi. Who would sign for a crazy deal? He couldn't be this. Who would sign for a crazy thing going on? But let me give you my affirmations. I believe. I, I appreciate so much. You're a legend. Mm-hmm. You've done so much. I appreciate so much. I'm very humble. Trust me. Man, I'm you don't know humble. what you have done to so yeah. many people who have aspired to do rap, who have aspired to to be artists, who have aspired even for this conversation. When people hear it and see how they've been swindled, right? People who have been abusing the space and see what you are doing and how crazy you think. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I think the most humbling thing is the amount of people in this generation of artists that come to me for mentorship. Yeah. You know, so they know who they are. They know they're always welcome. They know what level they have to be to talk yeah. to me about things. And yeah, man, I mean, it's going to be like that forever. It's, it was like that with the, with the Gananjis and Guambas then. It's like that with the Mel's now and, mm. the, and, the, and the Cape Bantons, you know. I'm always going to have little brothers and sisters in the industry, bro. Yeah. You feel me? It's nothing personal anymore these days. For yeah. me, for me, I keep it very separate. Yeah. You know, it's it's very few situations where like classic hazy and God will be very close to me personally as Mandela. But yeah. these days, I keep everything at bay. Mm. Man, I wish you all the best, man, to Bless, whatever that man. you're gonna be doing. Bless. Uh, you're a legend for Malawi. Mm. Uh, there's so much that you can still do. Um, you can still rule Malawi, man. Even from the private, but also even in politics. Uh, you can do it. Let me tell you something about Malawi, man. Yeah. I've read the Constitution before. Have you read it? Partially. You should read it. Yeah. And then you should decide how you'd actually run a country that has that for Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Crazy man, but yeah. I mean, I understand sometimes. Yeah. If you've noticed, I haven't pointed a single political figure since that Facebook letter. And mm. like I admitted today, it was for business reasons. Mm. I know how politics works. And Malawi's politics is very primitive and it's yeah. still tied to Kamuzubanda. Mm. Kamuzubanda's rules in mm. the constitution. That's why even in the Minerals Act, yeah, the first clause makes the whoever is the president at that time the sole custodian. Oh. So custodian, yeah, of all minerals in Malawi. So custodian, <laughs> yeah. You know, people oh. make noise, but they don't know what they're making no, noise they... about. <laughs> There's a time. Did you notice? Um, in um, I think it was 2019, December 2020. Yeah. When did we change governments? 2020. 2020. June. 2020, right? Mm. Yeah. It's 2019, December. Mm. So we already know there's going to be fresh elections, whatever. Those 100 tons of Diamonds that TZ said they confiscated. Did you did you yeah, notice that? Yeah, yes. yeah, and it died down. They said these stones are coming from Malawi. Malawi, yeah. They've been declared as something else, but the diamonds. They're diamonds. A hundred tons. Do you know how much a hundred tons of diamonds worth is worth? So we have a hundred tons of diamonds in Malawi, man. No, this is what left. What left? 
Oh, it's very simple. Where there's uranium, there's diamonds. Mm. Oh yeah. You got. Oh yeah. You, the the, the you, formation you got, is. You got from... some of the purest yellow cake in the world in Karonga, and you surprise there's diamonds in Malawi. <laughs> <laughs> Where there's diamonds, there's also oil. Yeah. It's, it's 98% yellow cake, what they found in Garong. Yes. Mm. These diamonds, you said they just died down. It's because a man must have picked up a phone and said, you can check the laws of Malawi, but those are my thing. Ah. TZ didn't know. They can't even, the president mm. of Tanzania can't imagine owning Minerals. minerals. So it's like, okay, I'm checking the concession. concession the mine. The Chinese bought the diamonds from the president and left with them. There's no crime involved. Nothing. Ah, the man. constitution allows him and me to do it later. <laughs> oh, whoa. You heard Chagwe talking whoa. about $85 million a year on gold. Those yes. are childish numbers. He didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. Mm. Now he knows how much money it is, it's, is involved. He knows the gold is his. Have you ever heard him open his mouth again? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Dude, this episode has to go on next week. No, no, no. I'm not waiting for this for more. Have you heard him? No, no, no. This answer podcast me, is next week. I, leave. I uh, hear you. Have you heard him say anything about gold in Malawi since? No. no. Not since that time. This is a billion dollar situation, fam. Do you know how much gold there is in Mongoji, bro? <laughs> Just you know, we're done there. Like, you know, they, 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 found, they found one of the world's largest deposits for a main ingredient for, um, they call this, um, the salt they use for, for cell phones. Is it cobalt? Cobalt, yeah. Cobalt. Uh, what is cobalt like, used for? Is it? It's in between the central region somewhere. You didn't, you didn't hear about that? I, I remember cobalt. hearing something like... They found trillions worth of that. It's it's a it's a over hundred kilometer radius square. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In Malawi. Oh, yeah, it's the president's. <laughs> it belongs to the, the deal will be made with the president. You feel me? When when guys were like, why is Bingo taking giving giving them taking only eight percent of the uranium uh. and then they build him a house in Portugal and it takes four point five percent? It's his deal, bro. E. I was over there making noise too. Until I read the Constitution You're and like, all these oh. acts, I read them because of my railway project. It's got yeah. mineral aspects. It's got solar aspects. I read. I study all this shit, fam. I don't just close these deals out of ignorance. Like I close them with people that have been in those industries way longer than me. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Is Malau sleeping? Definitely, bro. <sighs> Are you serious? And when the youth are making noise, that would be left out. We need jobs. We need like, jobs. We need this. You know, like, what, what do we know? know? <laughs> what do we know? When you say jobs, what do we what know? What do we know? I, okay, but we, what, are, what are you going to do about the mineral situation? Are you going to convince the president to do a constitutional review and let that go? And which president are you talking about? Because when he is even, actually... Even I'm not sure I'd do it. It's given to me. Okay, I'm lying. I'd do it. Yeah, I'd do it. I'd do it. If I ever become president of this country, it's because I'm already going to be filthy rich, bro. Mm. So it's like, what's happening in Zambia? It's, it's what I've always wanted to do. Yeah, the Zambia, the Zambian mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things, things are getting crazy. Yeah, like, like Virginia Palmer asked me once, like, what, what do you think would be the biggest factor in you running for president? I told her I have to have $30 million in my account first. You know? Because it costs thirteen million dollars to win in the Malawian election, and I don't want that money coming from, from anybody. Different companies in the because now you see Parastero. you're always appeasing. Jaguar and Tidima never had no thirteen mil. Yeah, you know, APM before his president never had 18, 13, 20 mil mm. for the election. JB never. So all these guys they end up owing someone, so yeah. they can't, and then they have. These the, presidential powers in Malawi are ridiculous. The only, it's just full of perks. <laughs> you mm. can't really do anything. Mm. I'm telling you. Hey, is he? Everything well, passed through the PVPC, you know? Everything passed through the PVPC. Yeah. You can't sign a deal with government without the PVPC. Yeah, you can't. You can't sign a deal with any ministry without the PVPC. You can't. You can make a, I, I've, I've sat with the president about this railway deal in October 2020. Mm. The PVPC telling me now in, 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 
in 2022, they'll fund the feasibility. And that's their right. Mm. He can't do anything about it. You feel me? <laughs> You're blaming a guy for so many things because he made you promises before he became that and knew what it really is. But he's not honest enough to tell you, I messed I'm, up with my words, mm. not my actions now. Yeah. He just has to say that and everything will be cool. Mm. Yeah, let's tell people, I didn't know what this is, now I do, and I messed up my words. But so far, I haven't done anything mm. wrong. What I'm I don't doing even is have, what I'm in. I don't even have powers to do shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. APM said, APM it. said it before? Yeah. You don't know the president. Yeah, okay, but he never went into detail. He yeah. never went into detail. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bro, <laughs> that's why I don't think even with this this case of um Kam- uh, Bakiri, I don't think that Bakiri guy who is going to be arrested. I think there's a what high, case? the the, the one point seven billion, billion corruption issue. back when he was uh, yeah he was the president. But he, he never. I think this guy's this, this that is something that we was don't meant know. for him for something that was for his. So I think it's us now sitting outside here who say he put the money into his own account when it was meant to. To go but to I think he was program, using right? something in Who the gives a president a check and says it's for the government? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know where the government accounts are? Yeah. Yeah, that guy's not going to be arrested. He's going <laughs> it's, it's, it's to it's be going to court and whatever. People are going to see that. <laughs> Gosh, man. No, seriously, who gives? It's his money. Yeah. This is what people don't understand. We're one of the poorest countries in the world, but... Our, our presidential seat is one of the most lucrative. Lucrative, yeah. People yeah, get so when rich people there. see someone bowling, they feel like he's stealing. They're not stealing, bro. These are the perks that Gamos used to receive that they're now receiving under the same constitution. The guy is okay. He's clean. Gee, they, they, <laughs> they're making Gamos Banda money. Gamos mm. Banda was worth over 20 billion pounds in 1992 when he, when he got sick. What? You don't know that. 20 billion pounds, what are you saying? You call this a poor country and my blood runs, fam. Like my blood gets heated. E. <sighs> uh, yeah, no wonder they can't invite you to this go to mm. in these forums. Because you're gonna break their heart. <laughs> 100 tons of diamonds is about a trillion dollars, fam. And one 100 tons of diamonds is so living. now because you're selling it And cheaply. it's quiet. That story is never yeah, discussed anymore. You, you probably sell it for 10 billion pounds, I mean dollars, cheaply. Because 10 billion dollars is a lot for a guy like APM. Yeah, yeah. So and he's he rich. And his, way out. Yeah. You sell that for 10 billion, it'll be in um, the Cayman Islands or Canary Islands, wherever. Offshore accounts, legally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Legally. Yeah. Everything is legal there. All legal. Yeah. All legal. Trust. If Jaguar ain't making that kind of money, then then he's lacking somewhere. Mm. If JB didn't make that kind of money, then she's lacking somewhere. No, if you look at JB, JB is one of the rich people in Malawi. If you look at the, um, I think their net worth or whatever, I'm assuming it's from there. Because when she was going there, it was just the, the, the school, right? JB is different because if you talk about that, it has to involve Cashgate, which is, which is again, the, the wrong place to look. Mm, yeah. How much do you think JB will charge people as a former president talking to universities in the States for the Clinton Foundation? <laughs> You're telling me Beyonce gets more to sing than her? Nah. <laughs> this is a million dollars, fam, that Beyonce gets to sing. You think JB's getting what? $20,000? She's getting two, probably. Hey. <laughs> So also you can't you yeah. can't just say good in Dama is much Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's so many things, but the perks are high, man. The perks of being matter of fact, I just might. <laughs> <laughs> the perks of being president in this country are not a joke. When you see big people going at each other's throats, yeah. it's not a fucking They know joke. what they're talking about. Yeah. It's not a joke. No, that's why I think people can do anything to just get there. It's not a joke. <laughs> but for me, the perks don't add up to the lack of liberties. I'm a very free person. You can't tell me what to do. Yeah. I'll be breaking the law as president all day. Mm. If it's this one, ah, bro, I'll be one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> like breaking like it's nothing. Straight. Oh, yeah, this episode is crazy, man. Ash, straight. <laughs> what is this? Do you know yeah. what it means that a ministry can't even sign a solar power deal as a ministry of energy with an investor? It's actually illegal for a minister to entertain that since before until February this year. 
Huh. Yeah, that's why the PPC could not do it me legally, where they're like, yo, we'll do it on our own. But nobody could give me answers because mm. it was illegal for them to detain me. Mm. Uh, they couldn't even sit, talk to you about anything. Of course, I got my paper trail because yeah. they knew how important it was. Mm. But I'm saying, according to the Constitution, yeah. the <laughs> Public Private Partnership Act, yeah. until it was amended by Parliament in February because of me being one of the reasons, yeah. it's illegal for a minister or PS to entertain an, an, an investor. investor. investor yeah. So they don't have to invest to anyone. They'll stay quiet. I don't know anything. It's called uns- an unsolicited bid. Cannot entertain a solicitor. So bids. no one can sign, like a minister can't sign I a deal. I said entertain. Kamuzu could send you to jail. I said it's Kamuzu's constitution, right? Yeah. <laughs> he could send you, the minister of education, yeah. to jail for entertaining someone who said they were trying to bring books to Malawi and try to make a deal with you. Just entertaining him. Having him sit in your office and talk to you. He could send you to jail. This, this is the same constitution we're using. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey. Hey, Mandela. Hey. <laughs> Your dad never knew what he was what he was saying, what he was doing when no, he was he giving No, he did, you. trust me. You did, right? Yeah. Mm. My dad was crazy, bro. Hey. Yeah. Ah, uh, you know, today I was going, I was, I was trying to call my mom. You know that 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 question I think is just best for her to answer one day. Mm. It's also embarrassing that like, she said something serious I can ask her. I, mm. <laughs> I said, me, I'm one of the blessed, most blessed people. I know I can't lie to you. Mm. People might not see the material, or whatever, and feel mm. like always asking me, "Yo, you could have been bigger. You could have been better, mm. ah, bro." And, and, and it's, it's about that definition of being bigger and better in that And what scenario. success what, means. What, what, what do you mean when you say, I could have been bigger and better? Who is bigger between me and I, you? I and can't you? imagine being this blessed if, if my mom wasn't praying for me, bro. Mm. I can't imagine being alive in Kenya if even though she couldn't support me, mm. I know she was praying for me to be alive, bro. Yeah. You That's asked me how I survived. I told you God is good. It's one of the mm. reasons. That's yeah. who I'm going to slap. Mm. It's like, yo, it's so crazy. you know what? For you to feel like that's the biggest thing you can use to bring me down, mm. go ahead. Will it work? No, it won't. Yeah. I've even had people tell me, ah, don't worry about beating your mom. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, that's not, that's not a norm. That's like, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <man. Ooh. laughs> right. So in 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 actual sense, what they're saying is, I hope is, we're recording. This. What, I what, hope we're recording. What they're, this saying, what they're saying is, it's okay. We understand you beat your mom, yeah, and it's okay. Reason. So yeah. don't don't let it. <sighs> yeah, imagine that's how GB. That's how bad GBV is in Milan. And then some guy in in SA in Luxembourg is going to tell me how to do this. Mm. They have no idea how deep it goes. You feel me? Mm. And that, the time that you were, you were doing that GBV thing, was mm. the, irrigation, the irrigation was still on? It's been there since 2015. Everybody <laughs> believes it because I've never gone out of my way to... You haven't I can't, said I can't, anything. What am I supposed to say? No, I didn't mm. beat my mom, guys. Are you fucking for real? Mm. <laughs> mm? <laughs> but there's people who know my mom and know me and know that shit ain't going to happen. Yeah. Do you know what? Hey, I can't even imagine what would happen because I can't imagine doing it. But if I had to, hey, my mom, my mom going crazy. My, my mom is a liar, bro. What? <laughs> I've never I've never even seen anybody push her. Mm. What are you talking about slapping my mom? Slapping my mom. <laughs> that woman's a beast, bro. Hey. Hey. That woman's a beast, bro. Okay. Her gumbo's crazy, man. I don't yeah. know where... Uh, sh- Ah, shit. <laughs> and this yeah. is a guy who slapped a chick in my house, bro. And I, I couldn't beat him out because my little bro. You slapped, yeah. you slapped a chick in your yeah. house? Who was the chick? What's her name? Maya. You can ask her. Maya? Yeah. Who's this Maya lady? You should date some chick called Maya. 
everybody knows, even him. It's like, he, he you slap to, chicks and you talk about me slapping your my mom, bro. It's like, so I'm going to buy you so Let me get it. Guambo was dating a chick who was, who was, and he came at your house and, and then something happened and he slapped the chick. I wasn't there when he slapped her. Ah. But he told me he regretted it and she told me Goody, she was very pissed off about it. They had their thing in their relationship? That's the thing, man. It's unfortunate what do you women go through what they go through and feel like yeah. it's, it's something they got to tolerate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess it, it's, it's a normal thing when it's bad, right? Dude. Wow. <laughs> ah, this is an exclusive. Ah, this, is this is an exclusive. <laughs> Nah, man, I can't wait till guys can tell me in, in, in front of their God that they pray so hard as born again rappers, goody, they've never put their hands on a woman. I'd love to hear that because I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> one, 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 I want to do one, 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 Wow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I support her. Ah, yes. <laughs> mm. Mm, mm, mm. <sighs> and I told him, bro, the only reason I'm not clapping you mm. is just because I love you, man. Yeah. He knows how I, I treat people who put their hands on women. He knows, bro. Mm. He knows it's the only thing that could get to me that you can say about me. He knows. Mm. Yeah. Oh, he knew that yeah. that's the only thing. Not that just a woman, to. but he said my mom, bro. Yeah. <laughs> the woman I respect most is the one he chose to put that shit on. And I know it happened so fast because he had nothing to hold on to. Mm. I was I was on my shift, fam. Mm. So he just said it and I knew he instantly regretted it. But there's no going back from it. He apologized later on? He talked to you? Some tweets, what? Like, how come you guys still believe that shit? That shit you need to take out a whole paper... <laughs> article and say what you did. Yeah. You think his career is going to survive that? Mm, it won't. Yeah. You just said this seven years later. Do you know how much money, if he had money, how much money I'd be building to sue him for in three years? Yeah. He almost cost me $50,000. Oh. It was a GBB project, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If people believe that, I wouldn't touch that. Do you get me? Yeah. What do you think I'm going? I'd sue him for if I yeah, sue him. Like, there's, no, there's no way that was It's on GBV. Yeah. You're on GBV. And then your story you is- You are accused of slapping your own mother and you're going out there to like, to why are you going to tell us about GBV when it's all over that you- But you still got ish. What's, how you got it is- <laughs> It's God, man. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Since then, Zanga, it's like, you can't stop this from happening. It's third eye and it's God, bro. Saying I wanna I want to th- I want to you can use, use me this. for this. Just give my brother long life, give my dad, my dad long life. And I'm gonna use this yeah. talent to make people. Gave my brother better. eight months, eight years, mm. gave my dad nine years. I could never ask for more. And what and we're not even because I'm still doing me. I have to. Yeah. So when people see you, I'm like, okay. when I look at this guy, the guy that I equate to Kanye is like, I see, mm. this guy, people don't know this guy. Nah. Well, what nah. similarities do you feel like? So, do you know the way Kanye think? Kanye think in a way that, okay, he's, he looks at what is happening. And when he, when he speaks about what is happening, people think- Kanye reminds crazy. me of D1 than me. D1 than you? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think outside the box, mm. right? I create. Uh, things that are not there. There's a difference. Uh, yeah. Kanye thinks out of the box about what he can do with fashion, mm. what he can do with music. I decide I'm going to put a railway structure in Malawi. Hey. I know he's spoken about d man. I've seen him. Uh. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not cool with him no more. I'm not going to talk about it. It's his job to talk about me to stay relevant, not mine. I hear you. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. I hear you. Wow. Wow, crazy. And I don't know how to end this interview, man, because I feel like... Yeah, this is something that can like really just go on and on. I think there's like a... 
there's too much <laughs> there's like too much in every conversation that hey man you're yeah. passed through a lot you're doing a lot but my affirmation to you is man you're gonna do a lot more Amen, that's what brother. i believe right I yeah. because people like you are people that are different and mm-hmm. that's, that's the reason i was interested with the name mandela because that's the difference differentiation yeah. uh element that came through at a particular time my I, I'll, I'll tell you something funny my my grandfather named me nepia like nepman Serious? yeah i was named nepia and nepia is a, a perennial weed uh, it shows up have... it shows up you think it's gone and then mm-hmm. at least two years max pops up again you can't get rid of it mm-hmm. then but my, my dad felt he had to name me so i think i was nepia for a couple months until when i was eight months huh. he was like no my son's called mandela like he really fought for him to name me. Wow. Whoa. And you can imagine nobody was interested about, the name was excited him. about him naming me after Nelson. It's like, how you going, what you trying to encourage him to end up in jail? Like, <laughs> you know, I can just imagine the conversation. Yeah. Like, I've seen his little diary where he wrote Mandela was born today. And then at that time I was called Napier. And then Mandela, Napier became my middle name. And then my mom at baptism, Call me Michael, so Mandela, Michael, ones, and our nephew is God. Yeah, but until Kumuzi, I got sangawa me amanko anebi. Crazy man! Now that you've mentioned Michael, yeah, where can somebody find your the, your, the book that you wrote now? Oh, Michael comes home. Yeah, um, I, I I printed about a hundred copies earlier. I think it was April that we sold. Has your story? Any, any full story? Mm-hmm. Has your full story? Oh, it's it just... has. Um, it's it's fact based fiction. You know, it starts off it, real. Man. I want to buy. And it. then yeah. where my life is at the time, it goes into fiction. Yes. Where I think it'll go. I want to buy it. Dope. Oh, you see now you're the first one after this crowd that I satisfied. So I need about you know. 15, 16, 20 more. Yeah, because so people asked months. people asked about that on the group. Like, where can you find the book? Yes. I need that book, man. With what I've heard here. Yeah. And I think after I this episode, book. everybody would want to read this. After this episode, because... people want to read that book. Yeah. So make then, it available. I don't know if you can create a, just a one page uh, online. I think about just... I think about doing another hundred copies next yeah. week. Yeah, please do. And then and, and hit Dennis. Uh we're gonna buy it. Yeah. One time. Yeah. One time. Uh, okay, there's one that asked, uh, was your mic bad with hyphen or about hype? Is he still in? Yeah, was it about hype or was it something that, really that you wanted to do? I really wanted to do it because I went on Facebook and asked who people feel like I should do it with. And people said hyphen unanimously. Oh, okay. And yeah. I mean, yeah. But it happened? No, it not happened. Okay. Yeah. But it, it, it was, I don't know what happened, how I missed it, but everybody was like really looking forward to it. Mm. And it just like, it was supposed to that, be on Zodiac, have, right? That could have been a legendary. Yeah, it was, to, it was supposed to be on Zodiac because I don't know how it disappeared, but it was something that everybody was looking forward to. And it was like... The, I think the only person who doesn't want to happen is Hyphen, but he's probably doing it to save my career. To save your career? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. He's, he's refusing to murder me. <laughs> Okay, Cause yeah, because I, I ain't gonna have a have I ain't gonna do a versus versus someone I know I can't lose against. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So when people say half, and I'm like, hey, damn, that's who I thought exactly. So I'm gonna go in there. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go in there swinging. <laughs> and that 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 he, be he's he's got a an a, <sighs> He's got an advantage over on the collabs. I got mm. more solos. So I just yeah. made sure I said with you, everybody does 10 collabs and 10 solos. That's it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> and, uh, it's something that we've been talking about. And we're going to, I think, put it on him. Right? Uh, we talk about, hey. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> And he knows it's wow. a setup. Yeah. I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. One get of it. our careers won't last. And that's my bro. So yeah. yeah. There's no reason for any of us to have no careers. Yeah. 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 I, I heard that you, you you removed your 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 accounts on social media? Yeah. All of them? Mm-hmm. You don't have social media anymore now? Mm-hmm. Like so you only use only how do you WhatsApp. communicate WhatsApp only? I'm off that by December too. 
WhatsApp. Mm. So you'll be on what? Email? Calls and text, fam, and emails. You know what happens when it's so easy to talk to you? Everybody talks to you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Let's mm. just put it like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, someone was asking, is there, uh, the, did you really stop using drugs? Ish, I've, I've been on that again, mm. like the past three, four months. Mm. I'm very casual about it. Mm. But yeah, it's one of my, my battles mm. that I remember, I think December 2020 is when I, I didn't, I started taking booze. Mm alcohol i mm. think i started again march mm. yeah it was like for three months mm. yeah break i wasn't intending to start again like i said these are these are my battles mm. yeah weed and that weed and cigarettes now man it's three months so i started again yeah. but it's not something i see and need you know i've yeah. um, i've really stepped my game up yeah uh, i feel like quitting again mm. So basically, it's weed and 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 and, and, and mostly yeah, cigarettes. A cigarettes. Yeah. Oh, when no, I, when I, I saw I, I weed, I can do it or whatever. Weed, I can do it out. But my cigarettes in the ass is my heaviest battle. Yeah, you're dealing with it. Yeah. But you're fighting, right? Not really fighting. I just do what I want, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, I took four beers. Mm. After like, I think the ones I think the first of this week. Uh. Mm. Just feel like having some beers. Mm. Before I used to drink every day, and I'm talking since I was 16, bro. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Mm, that's it. Anyway, quick one on the other ones is like uh, someone is asking for a freestyle. It's not yeah. gonna happen. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not gonna happen, guys. Uh, <laughs> you said it. Um, then yeah, another one freestyle. I think the again. other one was what other businesses does he do apart from music, which is mm-hmm. that is so that's something that we have like talked about. Yeah, like, we're talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have uh, there's a guy. What got buzz? Are you not who you promised to buy? Was it a bike? A, oh, I didn't promise buy to buy him nothing. Um, I saw his um story. Yeah. Um, I tried to reach out to him through the public, mm. like if you know him. Because mm. it's very easy for us to put funds together for that. Mm. Um, and then National Bank was very quick to assist. Yeah. To support. Mm. When it happened so quick. So in a couple of days, I was already in Is it uh Oh, I think it was a tuk-tuk. Tuk-tuk. Yeah. 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 We we're trying to buy him a minibus. So I didn't want to feel like I'm downplaying. Ah, okay. So I just left it alone. Ah, all right. Yeah. But we really wanted to... Already... already a few ministers had talked to National Bank mm. to talk to me about their, their support. Yeah. We're going to do that in real quick, but I feel like I didn't want to belittle anything. I get you. I get you, man. Uh, the other one, I think, is, is the one that you addressed. Uh, the line on the in the song called Flowers, you can get flowers from your brother. Yeah, I mean, brother. come on. Everybody know what that's about, unless they just don't want to think. Yeah, 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 yeah. What else? What else? What else? Because there's no way I can do a song about all those people and leave out someone I had under my wing for so long. Everybody knew how close I was with Guamba. Mm. You feel me? Mm. You feel me? It's mm. just like, um, when when I met Guamba, when when I started hanging with Guamba, he was doing shows at uh, Portuguese Club, bro. Zanzi, Teen Time. Like, mm. you know, I had a, let's do the cams with the band situation. Let's do the BICC band situation. Mm. Uh, I really elevated his mind, his his way of thinking. I can't I can't claim to 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 have influence over someone's progression in life, mm. but mentally, yeah. Like uh, even Jesus Mujimama and Krabba know, but it comes from my house. He knows this. Everybody in his family know why his mom would be like, "My son wants to be around you more, wants to live with you." Is that okay? Like he, come on, G. Yeah. The first time this G slept out of. His mom's house, you're sleeping in mine. His mom would let him go out knowing what he's with, his big bro. He's actually what? my cousin, bro. Serious? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I've heard, I've, heard, I've heard that. I've heard what the fuck is related. About? <laughs> These are my cousins, bro. It sucks to be doing this shit. Big yeah. time. I get it, man. I get it, man. Yeah, but it's all good. It's all love. I mean. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you respond to David when he said 
in in his song that it was Jim the Beef that the guy was saying imagine was, being uh, uh, imagine being far from God and not knowing right, no, no, no. I remember I almost did a, a song called Holy Cow <laughs> But um, insight talked me out of it when I went to the studio. Mm. Yeah, I was going to do a, a heavy song called "Holy Cow." Mm. Cause what's beef got to do with the church? And the- <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> Shoot! <laughs> <laughs> Sacrifices. Ah. You know, I'm going to sacrifice a few cows too lyrically. I, I'm not. I'm not the one to play with. If mm. if if I had done that, there'd be no David in the hip hop industry. Mm. Yeah, straight. I don't no. leave. I don't leave nobody breathing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you 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 protected him, right? I forgave him. I forgave him. <laughs> well, like like even Guamba, there's been so many subliminals, but you never hear him go direct because you can't talk shit about Third Eye on a Malawian stage. Mm. Yeah, mm. It's, it's never been done. Mm. Nobody feels like it's safe. Yeah. I don't feel like it's safe either. Yeah, feel me. And and when I start when I start also mentioning people like him in my music, you can see what he the the trajectory of the new album that's come out is not the same as you know because <laughs> mm. now people know what's up. You know, like I'm all sagris and I. I think that line about flowers is about him. Yeah, yeah, it's actually true. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And old Mandela says it's true, yeah. But this is hip hop, bro. Mm. It's like yo, nothing personal this time. Mm. The personal shit is you making those stories up. I don't give a fuck. But the hip hop, yes, I got, I got be me. I got protect my bro. Mm. Yeah, man. Crazy. You know. <laughs> one more, Eric, more question. The, the, the video has a hundred thousand uh, um, views in one day. But have you watched it? Which video? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking which video. Uh, you don't know. There's a video he's, 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 oh, yeah, there's my photo. He, yeah, my photo. Have no, you no, watched no, no. it? I, I, but it's got a hundred thousand views. Hundred thousand. Yeah. No, people are doing posts these days. Yeah, but people I haven't met anybody posts. who's watched it. So yeah. all these things are I starting to um, people well, yeah, starting to realize, you know? Mm. You could you can you can run your own gig, do you people leave you to it. If you want to pretend to yourself, mm. pretend all you want. But people stop caring now. They I'm not in a jagger one be. Yeah. Straight, 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 straight. You mm-hmm. feel me? And after Third Eye, it's going to be someone else. After Guamba, it's going to be someone else. Yeah. After anybody you can mention, there's going to be someone else. Yeah. And you can never be too complacent thinking you're going to stay there. Just because you watch your big bro stay there. Your mm-hmm. big bro different, nigga. He mm-hmm. built different. Even the White House knows him. He's different. <laughs> 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 Don't think because I've had a 15-year career, everybody's going to have a 15-year career. Yeah. It's different. It's different, son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never had an exclusive it's like different. this. Different. Yeah. It's, it's different. This is crazy Deep. exclusive. It's different. <laughs> and we're not cutting you in half. It's this different. Is gonna, it's going to go. In. <laughs> it's different, bro. It's different. Mm? It's different. Aye. It's different. Man. Hey, it's different. <laughs> Carry on. Do you have oh, a question yeah. for for the legend, man? I'm humble. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm humble ten times more than you. Carry on. Trust me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Dennis, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. And I think for me, I'm good because I thought I knew that I I nah. knew some of the pockets, but. But uh, no, nah, this has been like I had admitted that I didn't know this guy. Yeah, At least I'm I glad thought... you guys look like you know me better. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad the the people feel the same way too. Yeah. yeah. You feel me? It's yeah. like whatever. But usually I don't mind people talking in my silence. It's the thing. I it's really thing. don't mind. I really don't mind, man. Wow. People can say whatever the hell they want to say. Mm. I'm easy, bro. You know. So now you're dating? You married? Not right now. Okay. Mm. Cool. Single guy. Driving towards the big agenda, connecting Africa. I want a baby though. I just can't decide. You don't have a baby? <laughs> no. Mm. I, I just, I just can't decide whether I'm gonna marry to do that. Oh, or just to or get just do that to do an arrangement yeah. and get it. Good one. Mm. You know, um, I was telling some people yesterday about preparing for success. It's yeah. something we don't do as, as. I don't want to say Malawians, mm. but when my generation in this one mm. hasn't prepared for success, mm. you know, and 
when you, when you become successful, you're not ready. It's worse than being unsuccessful. That's it. So, That's it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm 38 in November, fam. In a few weeks, um, I'm at a position where I haven't um monetized what I do, mm. but the moment I do, I'd be a fool not to have a will because life expectancy in Malawi is 35. Yeah, 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 I get you there. Yeah, so that's the point. My my life and my mind is that when it comes to hip hop and business, there's so many things I see as trivial right now. Mm. I didn't enjoy talking about anybody I talked about. Yeah, but I had to because it's what it is. You it can't was, leave yeah. them out the story. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, <laughs> I could say this with them sitting right in the room. Everybody about me, everybody who knows me knows me. Yeah, yeah. But whether they can say what they've said about me or me sitting in the room is yeah. Is a whole other story. Mm. Yeah. Can you say in front of me and my mom could have beaten her before? I don't think you can. Mm. <laughs> you can't, bro. Mm. There's no way in hell you can't. No. Mm. You can't. There's no way, bro. That's crazy, man. <laughs> so you're thinking about legacy, you're thinking about having a kid, at least to hold to hold to hold the Mandela. It's not it's nothing to do with um mm. legacy. Um Tupac has this line like um Lately, I've been really wanting babies so I could see a part of me that wasn't always crazy. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. I can relate to that. Like mm. a purity that we don't have in our lived lives. Mm. Children actually are blessings. I've got so many kids who are very close to me mm. from other people that are close to me. Yeah. But I've always dreamt of having my own. Yeah. Mm. I just haven't, um, I can't say I haven't met the right person because there's a point I did have the right person. Mm. But she's not Tibo Boso. That didn't happen. Yeah. And she's not the kind to want to have kids either. Mm. She's thinking about it just for my sake. So already that's not right. Mm. Yeah, yeah. How when did that end? Mm, what's up? <laughs> 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 I think I've been single about a year now. You've been single for a year. But it's the thing, I've been on and off with her mm. for five years. Five years, uh, you guys, yeah. you can work it out then. Yeah, that's my that's my soulmate. That's the only woman I really love, bro. Then you can solve, you can sort it out. But also sometimes when you love someone, you gotta know they can do okay without you. In fact, do better without you. Of course. Yeah. So five years, it's, it's, it's a solid. You can't, you can't be with someone just because you you've shared a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it's also a, good a bad reason. Yeah, it's a bad reason. Yeah. Yeah, to get both of us to get stuck because we've invested We're so good. much of ourselves in it. Mm. It's it's. She's she's one of the people who taught me that, you know, all these things I'm saying about love is her. Mm. Nobody, my mom never sat me down and said, "This is how you treat a woman." Yeah, my dad never sat me down and said, "This is how you treat a woman." Yeah, but mm. you met someone who was able to understand and give you the direction in a way. Yeah, like Mandela, you treat women like shit because you always you always um having relationships with too many women. Mm. That's abuse. I wouldn't see it until she says it. Like that's abusive. You just can't mm. sleep with women how you want. Yeah. Because they got feelings too. Do they share that feeling you have? Like, is this a short thing? Mm. I'm like, damn, you know, Boosie teach me all this shit. Mm. She taught me how to love myself, bro. Mm. I never used to love myself. I never used to, you can't love yourself and go live eight months on the street chasing a dream. Yeah. That's not self love. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> We need to know that lady. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that lady, Dennis? No, I don't. Only my friends know her. Mm. I don't. Yeah. Ah, you see, I thought you I say don't. I'm your friend too. <laughs> I don't. No, that's why I'm repeating like I don't. Nah, me, and, me and Dennis go way back, man. Yeah. <laughs> way, way back. Mm. Mm. I think this yeah. is the most candid we've ever had a conversation. Is yeah. This one, right? Mm. We always have this conversation, but it's not but been it's not like this. Case. You have anyway. said it. You have said yeah. it. The moment but it's I my say, my brother, it's not a friend. The moment brother. I say that I need to have Fedai here because mm-hmm. people are talking about him, but of course I'm a, I'm a huge fan as well. It's not just about people. It was like, yeah, I know Fedai. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my brother. I'm telling you, y- my you may... brothers, anything they need, they get, bro. Yeah. 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 If you call me, I, I tell you I don't do interviews. Yeah, yeah, obviously. No, I had your number. People gave yeah, me your number, yeah, but yeah. I didn't. You're, I did. you're lucky you didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> For real. I have yeah. your number here, but yeah. I didn't. Because yeah. I was like, no, no, no. I think they, were, they should. Ha- there has to be a right way. One time. Mm. I think I've got two interviews with Dre. Mm. Dre not two. I yeah. think I've got two with Black Jack. Mm. I think i got one with Rex. Mm. I think i got one with... um. Galaxy FM, I think the one in Area 3. Yeah. yeah. But you see, it's like. I know those interviews. Very, you, you, very, you, you, you haven't been explicit like this way. 
This one is special. This is like, yeah. If I'm like, wow, oh wow, <laughs> he's being wowed, but he's a person that has known you for some time. Like, what is this? <laughs> Yo, man, I'll be honest with you. Mm. Very, 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 very few people know me. Yeah, very true. Uh, very, 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 very few. Yeah. Very. My mom is the one who has a very good idea mm. of who I am, but even her, she doesn't know me. Mm. But when when she becomes friends with the U.S. ambassador and gets invited to it her is, issues yeah. as a school owner and rubs shoulders with like huge situations, she mm. knows that's from Mandela. Mm. You see, so she knows how close, like for example, me and Virginia will be. Mm. And she knows, okay, whatever people say about this guy, there's no way this U.S. ambassador can be close friends with someone who is that. like that. Mm. So she starts seeing me in a better light and starts being, you know, mm. sees me with Phil's, Philip Smith. Yeah. These guys at Railway, when they approached me, they approached me through a company in Ghana. So I had the Ghana guys sit down with Phil Smith. Oh, what a link, man. It's a thing. Like, when, when, when they talk people about connections and, 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 and knowing people. And Phil Smith not- vouched for me. He told them, first of all, this project is possible in Malawi. And if there's anybody who can do it, it's Mandela. That's how I got my deal. Hmm. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this guy looks like he's seen a ghost, man. Mac, oh, shit. Mac, Mac. Mac. I say, Mag is not thinking right now. I'm <laughs> telling you, I'm telling you, I've interviewed people here, but yeah, this is this is this is wild, man. Like, yeah. I, bro, I can't I can't imagine meeting me and knowing everything about me. Mm. Yeah, mm. yo, bro, my my life is crazy. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy. my life. Is crazy. But I'm happy with what you're doing, man. Um, my I'm life is crazy. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. Crazy. Uh, Dennis, we have to close this. Crazy. Yeah, let's close uh, this. Let's close crazy. this case. Wow, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Like, I think this 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 podcast interview is gonna go like uh, yeah. yo, I don't know. This, this <laughs> one is for the legends. This one is for the legends. I'll leave it to to people to to decide. Yeah. But this one is for the legends. I I'll have to watch it again. Uh for me to understand it. Yeah. Yeah. I have to watch it again. Anything um, you want to say to the cameraman? You ask the right question, I give you the right answer, bro. Got you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, until <laughs> next time. <laughs> no. Until next Did time. Uh, Bless up. This is podcast with Magnoni. We had uh, we have the legend here, and we had a very awesome interview. Um, so challenged. I hope you will when you check this one. I think it's also only fair that everybody I mentioned yeah. you also have here. Yeah. To get this side of the story in. That's yeah, a yeah, you know, yeah. Basically, basically, I think it's that's only fair, you know. Yeah. 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 Anybody that's that's that you ask me about, you need yeah. to... We invite me. people. Only that some mm. people don't want to just come. I, I can they're, even they're get afraid. my mom to come. You can? Yeah. Perfect. She, she's yeah. done a... She, she's... um The EU deal, I had to do a documentary before to clean my act up. Fuck it, you know. She was in there. Whoa. I had Hazy in there. I had Taps. I had Ntanda. I had... um. Late Kenny Clips, mm. you know, it's it's about me through their eyes. Yeah. Wow, I I'm still thinking about. It. I want to put it out, but it might come it's out there? this year. Yeah, it's there. Dude, let's do it, man. <laughs> come yeah. on, it's come there. on. Like, that document know? has to come out, man. It's 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 got that vibe. Like it's it's something people usually do when you die. So oh, got, um, it has a thing. Yeah. Who so, has who, who's skipping it? Me. <laughs> no one else is skipping it. No. to come on man i'm 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 close to getting tempted okay yeah right I mean, now i want to i want to put um the aviator thing the plane <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i want to put the aviator logo on it and then when it starts because it starts with the drone coming down so the the the, the, the plane will be flying like that <laughs> and then when when it comes down to my mom's interview it'll fly away <laughs> <laughs> And then it'll it'll keep popping up little yeah. parts of yeah. And like when I'm pissed, it's like one point zero zero X <laughs> boom flew away. <laughs> Feel <laughs> me? And then I'm going I'm going I'm going to put that in there, and then I'm going to go to Premier Bet and tell them I want ten mil for it. Do this, see. That's, that's it. it. That's the <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. Are you, you're gonna make man. them a lot. 
You gotta yeah. make them a lot. Yeah, and ten yeah. million ain't nothing to it's them. It's nothing yeah. for them. Yeah, it's like a it's like a minute of money, right? Yeah. Why, why I'm mentioning these figures is I need people. I had a very big argument with someone last night who was my my uh, who I was mentoring, but now I can't even say anything to him because he just finished his courses, his degree mm. that he, I think he was doing like a master's. Mm. So I told him, okay, you just finished, right? Just remember that ten million dollars ain't a lot of money. Hey, we had an argument, bro. He was making it look like I'm trying to act like he's talking about no him. He has practical goals and mm. like mine are impractical. Uh, you feel me? Yeah. So that's when I'm like, ah, you know, these people who are sometimes divulge this info, like this is what I'm doing in Mozambique. They don't believe it because you can't believe I own 15 percent oh. of a 112.5 billion euro project, and then you think I can't get my hands on 10 million dollars, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey! Mm-hmm. But that documentary has to come out, man. It has that to. That documentary has to come out. Your your story is is amazing. That time we we also incorporated a lot of um stuff um, we're doing for some. I almost did a reality TV show. That could have been crazy, yeah. man. So we we did about two months, mm. but it's at my lowest point mentally because mm. I ended up at the uh, St. John's after that. Mm. Ah. So you, when I watch myself, I don't like myself. Ah. Yeah, I was. So it's there as well. Yeah, it's it's in the documentary. It's infused into. Ah. It. Mm, that's why it's, it's 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 a big it's a long thing. Yes, that's why you're thinking about it. I hear you. Yeah, I would do it if if I get paid the right amount. Mm. Mm. Ten sounds nice. Now, if you if I if I had a, lo- a lot of money, it would be like say, hey, let's we, go we, for we, it. We could have made this. <laughs> let's go for it. We could have put our money on this. This is huge, man. Yeah. Yeah, ten means. No, but but I think ten it's, means it's, I get to give Tanda a meal. I get to give Kenny Cliff's mom a meal. I get to give Hyphen a meal. No, Tanda is in the US. She's eating. That's a thousand dollars, fam. She gonna have fun with it. <laughs> and then I take the six and I live. Yeah. And taps as well five. So that's like they take five. I take five. So even though I took care of everyone during that, and they expect nothing. This is how I roll. So when someone says he fumbles a bag, mm-hmm. they talk about me taking 10 mil and giving people a mil each and having five left. Dude, they say you that's do that. I say. You make everyone songs. eat like yeah, that. That's that. what they talk about in <laughs> diss okay. songs, bro. Are they dissing me? And then they they want me to come out and say all these things I'm saying. So that they can, they, they, they you, you vindicate yourself in one way or the other. Yeah, but it's like, fuck you and fuck everybody listening to your songs, bro. <sighs> <sighs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, but yeah, but I hear you. But I hear you. Uh, but I'm yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, let me close it again. <laughs> Actually, okay. since since yeah. we postponed the show, I was thinking of doing that, releasing the documentary oh, yeah. to make up for. That because yeah. I was looking forward to that because yeah, I was talking to someone at PICC. You were supposed to do it at some <laughs> yeah, place that, yeah, yeah, that would have been innovative, man. Yeah. It's but different. you know, it's like we have um, we have a lawyer talking about um, it's a very interactive youth uh, workshop oh. which I'd host for two hours. Oh, so I'd interact. I'd be talking like this with the people, mm. these experiences, mm. and it's about the role of art in job creation. Mm. So how to turn your passion into a hustle. Mm. Like an actual yeah. revenue stream, so you'd have a lawyer talking about um intellectual property. Yeah, you'd have someone like Yolam. Um, I asked him to talk about from Epic Group. He's so good with branding. Yeah, like, can you talk to them for five minutes about it? So Yolam will talk for, about branding for five minutes. Yeah, and then I'd interact with the crowd for ten minutes about what they think about what he said and how they go and apply it. That was a crazy experience, so, man. So a few people I talked to earlier this week felt like it was too big. To just do the way I wanted to do. Mm. I feel like we can actually give it some longevity. They and a bring. conference feel like where you do it. Not really a the... conference feel, but okay. they're letting me do me, but they feel like it can be bigger. That's mm. what they told me. Like, yo, you can't be organizing this on your own. Mm. Okay, I get this it. This is what I always do. So, mm. like, they they willing to put a team together for me, manage it, find some finances for me, mm. which I'm always doing on my own. So it's like, you know what? Yeah, you've been putting I, pressure I don't need on this your own, headache. Man. Next week, so if they want to take over this headache, I'd rather just switch it to March and let people say what they want to say. Yeah, that's a good idea because you've been yeah, I thought it was very pressing good. yourself yeah. for a long time. Too much, mm. Mm, too much. Mm. Was the mental health the thing that took you to uh, to St. John? Part of you maybe dealing with uh, finances, maybe 
because you're trying to organize shows. What really cracked my brain, because yeah. I could feel a crack, is the Railway Project, because I, I signed my deal on um, the 18th of July, 2018. Mm. Before I signed it, I had to do a lot of research, mm. not only on the internet, but through someone I can't name, mm. who was one of my mentors. Yeah. And he was in Blanta for two weeks at time working. Very big guy. Mm. So when he tells he he knows me so well and how my mind works, he can teach me such complex situations in a very simple way. Yeah. So even things like BOT, like build operate mm. transfer. Cause now I'm trying to close a deal with a, a company in the States mm. that does this. Mm. And I have to be on point. I also mm. have to be on point with the government. I need to close it. Where? I also need to know what I can actually do it. So mm. that week, I was on leaving. I was at work with the Ministry of Transport. I'd, I'd have a meeting with them at two. So this will be on, uh, let's say, Tuesday. It means I leave Els 11 p.m. Monday. I'm on four Red Bulls. Mm. I'm in Blanta waiting for big man to have an hour for me mm. on the Tuesday by lunchtime so I can leave. It was just, yeah, and then I'm yeah. dealing with um, the American time zone, which is six hours behind. Mm. And then I'm dealing with the Guamba story. Mm. Everywhere I go, people keep asking me about why did you beat your mom? Mm. <laughs> and then it was like at that time, 2018 is not figure out where I really got a lot. That's why I started threatening him. Like, I'm going to fuck you up. Mm. Yeah, all that shit happened that time. Mm. And then in the same week, I ended up writing a, an open letter to the president because I saw Goody, this week I've dealt with these guys that never going to give me this project. Mm. And it so happened that the person who had mentored me into a situation where I could reach that level was also best friends with the president. So I had a who? knife him in his heart, you know? Mm. Mm. So you that that, that was your, bro, your your breaking point. The railway project, my mind grew too quick. Mm. Yeah, I I pushed myself to limit so way so many ways. Because that's a that's a that's big man. It's not like for everyone. Like it's not like you can't give that to me right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The things I had to do to handle it split my mind in two. Mm. I I knew something was wrong with me. Mm. Just that the way my family and friends handled it, like they did it by force. Mm. is what pissed me off. So and they dragged I, you to, to, to the hospital? No, um, they got one of my close friends to talk about taking me to a life coach. Oh, okay, okay, okay. For okay. a session. Eh. And then she just kept attacking me about my weed and shit. I'm like, dog, uh, I'm too famous to sit here in this hospital and not have an NDA with you <laughs> asking me those questions. <laughs> so I went to sit back there and that's what they called mad, bro. Mm. And then I saw like six people walk towards me, so I knew I was up. Mm. Then I went outside, I started calling my big brother, one who's being, who would be telling me these railway stuff, and mm. he wasn't picking up. That's when I, someone told me, "Oh, he's in on it too." Yeah, so everyone when, was when part that of did it, yeah. that, it kind of drained me, and I just mm -hmm. let them grab me and push me on the floor mm. and tie me up. I just let them. Then I woke up on a bed and I couldn't move my tongue. I was like heavily sedated. Yeah. They keep you very sedated. Yeah, those you, you can't even think, bro. You, yeah. Those so now I'm even starting to begin to believe I'm crazy. Mm. Until I start to see crazy shit. Like, no, 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 that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but even in the crazy, I'd be like, yo, why is that woman running around naked? Mm. She just left the shower. She's running around naked. Mm. Then she run around and then run back to the shower. Mm. I'm like, oh, shit. So you mean this hot feeling I'm having from these meds is from the meds? You're like, ah, oh, yeah. Like, oh, I'm gonna get to that level if I don't do something. But you that. don't do something. So, yeah. Do you know how I got out? I called Phil Smith. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was already crazy for me to be saying, yo, I got, and that time I'm talking like this, like wow. uh, <laughs> my, my speech is slurring. Yeah. Um, meth, I can't talk. Because for me to even say, I have, gee, for me to even say, yo, I've got a railway project I'm supposed to have meetings about and the 
wondering where I've disappeared. It's been like two weeks. Okay, call the head of DFID, D, Bill Smith. My mom like, oh shit, I know that guy. They're very close. Not personally, but they work together. And so my brother came on the phone mm. and some staff there. Yeah. And they called the number on last speaker. And as soon as he answered, Bill Smith is like, how are you, Mr. President? Because that's what he calls me. He's mm. very serious about it. He's like, how are you, Mr. President? And I was out in four, three days. My brother went there as well. Mm-hmm. We dropped him. This other time, went to Zomba, the mental health hospital. Mm-hmm. That place can <clears throat> mess you up. It changes you. Yeah. The guy who got shot by police where everybody trying to paint like he mad. Yeah, that guy. That's my best friend. I went to see him at the clinic two years ago. You went and there as well? Yeah. So I, one thing is letting him know what he the effects this meds has on him and agreeing with, okay, this is what's happening now. Mm. We've been walking through it together, man. There's nothing crazy about it. Whoa. In fact, those meds make you even more aggressive. That's the thing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you get me? Yeah. <laughs> so that's 2018. Uh, yeah. Worst year of my life, straight up. Forget the sleeping on the streets, all that shit. I'm sleeping on the streets here. Cause now when, you, when you're in a fight with the president, even my mom, when I go to her house, you can see the fear in her eyes. Mm. People threatening to close us, burn a school, all that shit. Mm. My brother's trying to get mad at me. Everybody mad at me. So, was that open later, right? Mm. Where do I stay? Do you know? No. <laughs> Where do we stay? <laughs> Gee, there's a time during that week when when SKC had his security detail taken. Mm. Yeah, do you that's remember a, that? Yeah. Nobody could understand why. It was over me. I, I texted SKC, like, yo, I was at the Capitol Hotel. It was like, uh, the same day I wrote that letter, I was like, yo, can you send four people here to secure me and bring me to a state resident? I called a state resident. And then I told him I'm going to switch on my phone in 30 minutes. And then I switched it off because they track phone. It's very easy to track you with your phone. Mm. Yeah. I switched it off. That time I'd walk from Capitol Hotel around 11 a.m. I walked like, um, I walked in this direction, um, area 25 like this, mm. 49, mm. town, garden. And I came out the side around five, six. Mm. But I stayed on the move that day, I didn't sit down. Mm. Yeah. And I came back to where I was around 11, and then I switched my phone on. And then I, I sent a text to SKC, right? And then I told my, I switched it on in 30 minutes. And I start counting seconds in the dark. You know, it's pretty misleading. I switched on my phone around six six forty two. Yeah. And then I found a missed call from him six twelve, about twelve minutes after I texted him. Mm. So I jumped the fence again. Well, next, next day they took his security detail. Just because of that, like that interaction. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> next, uh, the Thursday after oh, that sh- is when. Is when um, APM flew for an emergency BRICS meeting in SA mm. and left uh, Brighton Saka as the president of this country instead of SKC. I'm out of here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how we close it, guys. <laughs> Until next time, this is podcast with like Johnny. We're out. We're out, guys.